Today's guest brings us to New Zealand, and we're happy to be here. And uh, he is he is a fighter, a kickboxer, a artist. Um, he it's fascinating to watch him experience the world. He's a damn human Van Gogh of some type of sorts. Um, he's had one of the greatest runs as a UFC champion. Uh, I'm just grateful to spend time with him today. Mr. Israel Adesanya. Yeah, brother. Cheers. Cheers. Good as I'm a look. Yeah. That's about it. Healthy eight. Mm. <laughs> I'm an eight. You're pretty ha- you're you're pro- I mean, they don't have a lot of like well, let's still fucking go down that road, man. What? I can't call another fighter handsome. Yeah, you can. Well, you're good looking dude. I like the hair. <laughs> if I could mullet, I'd definitely do it like for a season. Really? Yeah, fuck yeah. Well, they need someone, and yeah. I don't want to say who but yeah. someone of certain culture yeah would be neat to see the jerry curl really yeah i know what you mean i used to have jerry curls when i was younger it was a thing maybe in the late 90s early 2000s yeah. but then it's yeah. not good for your scalp not really? good for yeah oh no all the chemicals in there you also the last time i did it i burnt my scalp oh damn really? yeah i left it on too long so then i was like right we're done with that but also, it's not good for your scalp, for your hair, because my hair is meant to be, as you say, nappy, like texturized, you know? So yeah. having to burn it out to straighten it and then put perm and all that stuff is not Oh, you got to do that. So it's like you got to straighten it and then yeah. so the relaxer it. straightens it, and and then you can put the jerry curl in there and then makes it curly. Yeah. But yeah, I never had it long. I had it short, but still. I mean, a mullet would be nice, though. Yeah. Dude. I think it would be, be a cool fight. I mean, who... Uh, Miguel Torres, Ricky Simone, Ricky Simone. Yeah, he's got a nice one. Uh, yeah. A lot of guys at the gym. I mean, oh, uh, who so else? We... Ortega has. Did he have one? Nah, Brian Ortega. Long, he just had locks, like nice. Arnold Allen. Did he have? Mm. I'm trying to think. I a lot of Kiwi guys, like my guy toes him up. A lot of the guys in. Oh, in a lot of damn gym. women in this country yeah. have this. <laughs> You're not wrong, to be honest, bro. You'll see yeah. a grandma with a hatchet like, in this yeah, hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this is no, real. It's, it's, it's standard. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it would be awesome on some of the highlight videos just to see the fucking whoosh. whip when you hit someone, bang, just over getting hit. That's one thing I, well, I'm yeah. grateful for is like because I know it looks worse sometimes when you have long hair and you get hit. And maybe even if you roll with the shot, yeah. the crowd goes, oh, yeah. And then you're like, fuck, they thought that, uh, bro, that a whiz passed me. But yeah. it looked like it, you got hit because of the. Dude, the that's whiplash. what's interesting about you. You're that intricate to detail that you want to even man it. Like you want to have a say so in how you even get hit. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Like, how does that look to people? Yeah. You know, like you're such an entertainer. Mm-hmm. It's like I even want to make that look. As perfect as, as I can. possible, yeah. yeah. I try not to get hit, but if I'm going to get hit, I'm being hit by the best. Yeah. You know, a lot of them. So, um, and they're always iconic moments, but still, like, yeah, the game is hit and don't get hit so yeah. I can preserve my uh, my noggin. Yeah. <laughs> my brain want to keep this intact so I can keep doing this and I don't have to talk. <laughs> 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 You don't want that, yeah. Bro, it is kind of crazy. Like, reporters will totally look over that a guy can't even speak uh, just to be like, hey, how do you feel about this yeah. next fight? I mean, that's why Joe, shout out to him, he stopped uh, interviewing guys after they've been knocked out because... Oh, know, really? Yeah, he said that. I think it was after one of the... Uh, Overeem, after the Overeem fight. And Overeem, there's a famous meme or saying, he says, I clearly felt a tap because uh, he had Stipe in a guillotine and he thought he tapped. But again, he just got rocked, so... You know, your brain's not really all there. I've been knocked out before, like cold once. Shout out to Pereira. Um, yeah. Pereira, is that how you say it? Yeah. Pereira. Alex Poitain Pereira. Oh, he's a, he's, he's really. Yeah. I, I feel like you probably I return admire the favor. him. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. I Look, people think I'm, I'm not a hater, man. I'm a guy who we're all in this game together, right? We're all trying to better our, our lives for our family and all and generations and all that. And he's achieved it, you know. In the beginning, when he first came to the UFC, granted, he didn't have the run that I had. 
he got to the spot he got because he already beat me in kickboxing. And I don't want to hop on too much about this. Like, um, but I want to give you the history. Yeah, for those no, who, no. For, yeah. Those, for those who don't know, I'll give okay. for the, yeah, because I'm sure new people will be watching this, so they, they right. gotta understand. It was literally three nil. Oh, two and no, two and no, two and no. So technically, the first fight, I thought I won. You know, anyone who watched it, well, oh, he edged that out, and then they gave it to him, and I was like, what? Okay, cool. Second fight, we go to Brazil. I think Sao Paulo, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, and I was there on Carnival. Oh I was, man, I was cutting weight. So I couldn't be outside. <laughs> but I tell you what, oh. I'll never forget this. I go downstairs from the hotel when I get to Sao Paulo because um, you have to get like a, a plug that works, you know, a converter. Oh, yeah. And then I, my phone was on 1%, so I left it in my room. I go downstairs, and I'll never forget it. I see this guy and two girls, and then one of them kind of looked back to see who was behind her and smiled and just had the most beautiful ratio ass oh, to tits yeah. i've ever seen in my life and i remember thinking like fuck i wish i could capture this moment but i just yeah. right there <laughs> i just right yeah. there so but i think they were hookers though because <laughs> he see. was getting the, it was probably like 2 a.m we landed or oh, something yeah. so he was getting some for to go yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something to yeah. but um yeah that that was beautiful just right there anyway back to the fight so i fight alex and then Oh, especially if you're getting eaten in a couple of days. Yeah, oh, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah. Hungry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I get to the fight. We're, we're yeah. doing work, beating them, and then he catches me because I rocked him in the second round. And in the third round, he just came back, rallied up, and just caught me, flatlined me. That's the only time I've ever been knocked out. And was that the kickboxing? Yeah, kickboxing. Okay. And then, yeah, when when I came, I, was, I came to, I was, and I remember, like, they were rushing me, trying to put oxygen mask on me. And I was like, I don't need that. Hold up. And they tried to take me out on the stretcher as well. And I was oh. like, chill, champ. Like, we're not, <laughs> yeah, we're not. It's not that deep. <laughs> <laughs> but then I walked to the back. And I remember me and Eugene just walk silently to the back, to this white space. And just kind of like, huh. I was like, what do you hit me with? And he goes, left hook. He straight away just told me left hook. It's like, your hand didn't come back fast enough. I was like, ah. Oh. But again, in that, that time from being knocked out to that moment, having a mic in my face and then, so, how do you feel about this fight? That wouldn't be ideal. So, I'm yeah. glad Joe stopped doing that. Um, just so the guys don't have to embarrass themselves or say something that they might regret later on. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I never, I, I didn't even think about how crazy that is that they even do that. It's mm. almost like, like, kind of like when you have to do that dizzy bat game, you know, where you spin your head. In my gym, we have this drill that we haven't done in a while, actually. But the dizzy bat game. And then you do it 10 times, then you get up and you have to hit the pads. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. You never know in a fight where you might get rocked and then yeah, you have to keep your, keep your composure. So, yeah, dizzy back game. And then, you know, most times it's like you have to run straight. But this one, you have to write there, one, two, ba ba, one, two, three. And you're just... But again, that's what it's like when you get rocked sometimes and yeah. you're just like, oh shit, you have to keep your composure. So, Oh, that's yeah. interesting. It's an old school drill that the Liga boys, Balmora Liga boys had. So Eugene's done it a few times, but I might bring it back for some fun. Actually, I might do it for some content. That'd be a good idea. It's inter I feel yeah. like it'd be fascinating. I've yeah. never seen that. You because, ever train? Uh, yeah, I've trained, but I'm just a one-stripe white belt. Ah, I see. Nice. But there's still some possibility. Oh, you can still... There's levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's levels. <laughs> you can still... <laughs> three stripes. Imagine yeah, that. Fuck. you be a badass. Oh, I'll fuck somebody up outside of a Jimmy <laughs> John's. <laughs> yeah, you can get three stripes. Um, <laughs> dude, I watched the documentary, man. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. Thank you. It was really interesting for you to just, like, share about, like... Ooh. It felt like what it's like to to, like... Not only kind of to be, to have some of your history, but mm. then also to like the pressures of how things change once you achieve your dreams and your goals. Mm. And then how some of that feels like it doesn't really fulfill maybe what you thought it was going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like I could relate to that a ton, yeah, man. I'm sure. Wait, when did you, when did you kind of like, like blow up? What, what age would you say? I would say like five years ago, I think work started getting busier for me, probably. Maybe. So about five years ago, you would have been, yeah. I'm glad I didn't find fame at a young age. Like, say, 25 year old Izzy with everything that I have now, bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Theo, bad idea. That's, that's, that's a story for later on. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm glad I found fame later on. But, but still, you know, they say, be careful what you wish for. Yeah. And, I don't regret anything. I, I'm, I'm ready. I prepared for this life, but it's it's still surprising. Yeah, there's levels. There's all these variables you don't expect, and 
I've kind of set myself up now to the point where, okay, I've I've expressed enough, like how I've example. What's one? Um, after the UFC two three two four three in Melbourne, um, I defended my belt against my Whitaker. Anti- against Whitaker, yeah. so I defended my belt the first time. I like to put it, and then going to the airport, I remember just thinking in the car like, fuck, because I was kind of just it was so much stimulus because. I just did what I did, and still the to this date the highest attendance in UFC history was six fifty seven thousand one hundred twenty seven people, and all these everywhere I went, you know, oh, it was yeah. just crazy. Even the week fight week, I went down the strip, just walked alone, just because I was like, let me enjoy this while I can, you know, because I didn't know how long I would have that for. I can still do it now, but because I've I have boundaries now, I didn't have that for a long time. But what I did on the way to the airport, going back to NZ, I, I just put out a thing on my story or a tweet just saying, like, look, if you see me at the airport, just approach me cautiously. You don't have to come yelling. Because for me, I was like, oh, my God. I'm yeah, sure it's crazy. It's very like, scary. Sometimes you, they, you, you think you're on remember fire. The, the, the bit in the movie where I didn't even plan it and they just kind of like drove by. And I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. yeah. And it raised my adrenaline up. And then they came to my door. And that's why I moved houses because people would just come to my door and... Oh, oh my God. I'm so, and this is like 9 p.m. at night. I'm like, yo. And I had to bounce. Let me like, borrow some quiche. Yeah. yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> a guy's tried to sell me a watch once. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. And then I was <laughs> like, hold up. And I went upstairs, came back down. I was like, I already got this watch, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was a G Shock, like a black and gold one, classic. But then for me, I just, boundaries. I had to learn boundaries for myself. Yeah, because you burn out. Yeah. It burns you. After I do any kind of media stuff or anything with fans, my people just know, my friends, my security, they just know, okay, I just go to my room and I just re- regroup or replenish my social battery, if you will. And I'm sure you've had to deal with this as well. Yeah, I didn't know that I had to do that. when yeah. it, Like about two and a half years ago, things were going well, you know. Mm-hmm. I was like being able to sell tickets and stuff and just like yeah. you work so hard for it, you know. And I didn't know, like I would go meet every fan after. I didn't know. I felt like. I, it was I could never do enough yeah. to make people think that I was enough. Nah, you gotta. There's more. They'll never. There's never enough because like, you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. I haven't stopped signing um, these uh, guys who just come camp at the fighter hotel. I don't even stay at the fighter hotel anymore. I always get my own space now just because I remember like, oh, can you sign this please? And then they'd have like a stack of shit. Oh, totally. And then you know I didn't want to be the bad guy, so I'd sign everything. But it got to a point where I'm like, hang on. That's not just for you. You're selling that. And, yeah. yo, just be honest. But, again, don't take the piss and have, like, 20 fucking gloves for me to sign. I'm like, yo, no, 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 no. You, yeah, you sign making... this for my daughter. You yeah. sign this for my, my grandson. Oh, my God. When they He's use their six kids. Six months old. I don't like it when they use their kids as, yeah. as a Trojan horse. They come with the kid. I'm like, don't. And I'm like, do you want to take a picture? Because sometimes the kid will be like, who the fuck's this guy? Yeah. I'm like, do you want to take a picture? <laughs> or does your dad want to take a picture? Because if he just said, oh, bro, I'm a big fan. You know, can I take a picture? That's cool. But again, it's just boundaries. Boundaries and respect. Like, I just came back from the gym. I actually go to a a public gym once in a while now. Because after the the last lockdown, again, I come out into the world and people are all locked down. They're excited. The energy was always just... And I just didn't know how to deal with it. Because again, I'm human. And I'd get really anxious and sometimes a little bit short with my fuse. Oh, me too, for sure. What f- bro, what the fuck? Like, come, yeah. yeah, let's take a photo, but chill. And then I realized, no, I got to fix this. So I went to a public gym just because I was like, immersed myself in people. And again, I'd have to tell people, nah, not right now, I'm working. So that was my way of learning the reps of wow. saying no. You have to learn how to say no. Because if you don't say no, they'll just take, they'll take. And they'll hold you hostage with their conversation as well. Yeah. I don't like that. Oh, they're like, we FaceTime. My stepmother's dying, you know? Like, we FaceTime. <laughs> like, <"Dude>, look. <laughs> she don't want to see just, me. What am I going to do? Tell her some jokes. <laughs> and then I, I get on there and she's like, who is Oh, it? no. And the lady is like, what the fuck? She doesn't give a fuck. She doesn't give a she fuck. She has bigger problems. She's trying to die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's trying. Yeah, she's trying she's to like, her, like you She's can... trying to like hide whatever bad stuff is left in her home yeah. before God comes and gets her. <laughs> and now she has to like pretend that we can talk yeah. um, but no I just found it to be fascinating because I I thought that once I got to a certain part of success maybe or if enough people knew me I thought everything it's inside cool. of me would be cool nah. and it bro it, when it wasn't it yeah. I mean no, it knocked me out because mm. I was like if this doesn't fix whatever's going on inside of me then w- I don't know what else could fix yeah. it you know it's, it's never external it's always here internal so 
I had to learn that from watching other people. Like, example, Rashad Evans, when he won the belt, UFC 92, he said, it just he thought it would be different, but nah, it didn't feel any different. He just felt meh, kind of like, okay, I've done it. And I felt the same way. So when I won the belt, I was like, did it feel different? I was like, I still feel the same because I always felt like I was the best. I always said, this is just a fancy tiara. It comes with me just keep winning. So I never chased a belt ever. I've never chased a belt. I've never even identified myself on my bio or to people as, unless for a promo, I say UFC middleweight champion. But apart from that, nah, I just, I know who I am. So I never, I don't, the belt doesn't make me. I make the belt. I'm still me. Look how many people are calling me out and I'm not even the champion currently. <laughs> crazy, yeah. It's I'm Israel Adesanya. I, I feel like my name has transcended the belt itself. I don't uh. need the belt to show I'm a champion because how you carry yourself is 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 what makes you a champion. Yeah. But I'm still learning though, constantly, every day. Yeah, no, that's what I got from the documentary too. It was cool, man. It was inspiring. It was inspiring. Um, I appreciate that. It really was, man. Because a lot of that I could relate to too. Like I remember mm -hmm. like when I was growing up, I just wanted to be seen. I remember you saying that at one point. And it was like, for some reason, I just, I was like, I'm going to make people see me. And I don't even know what it meant or anything. It was just, it was like a, yeah. a, a, like a lighthouse that was Did inside of me. I, I just got like. Oh, were you just, a bully? I wasn't a bully. I just didn't get <laughs> any attention. Now this haircut might have bullied. <laughs> this haircut might have fucking. You're like the same size. Just yeah, like, 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 give me your lunch money. <laughs> look, I was feared in a lot of softball circles because uh, yeah, of my haircut. Right. They're like, this guy's dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That this guy. Yeah. <laughs> this, this fella. Yeah. Um, but no, I think I just did. I think I just felt like I, I didn't want anything to define me except for me. Yeah. That was like, it was like, and I don't even know where it came from, but it was like, I didn't want to attach myself to anything. I wanted to walk to school and not take the bus. Mm -hmm. I didn't want anybody determining. The only way you were going to learn about me was through me. Wow. That was it. There was nobody else you could add. There was, it was all, especially with my voice. It was the only thing that I had that was mine. Yeah. And so it was like, I'm going to use this. Are you an only child? No, I got three siblings, but I think I felt like an only human probably. Oh, wow. I felt like an only human. A lot of like solitude when growing up. Yeah, just a lot of like lack of connection with, like with family. Just like felt like I was in my own world. Yeah, just working freelance. It were felt you the, like. Were you the oldest or? No, I got an older brother. Older brother. So yeah. You're middle? Yeah, I'm middle. But we had like a lot of just like addiction and people. It just wasn't like a, no connection. Mm. So I felt like I'm sentenced into this family, but. There's no real family here. That, yeah, you guys didn't have dinner at the table, none of that. No, we just had fights. It was always uh, like fighting and a lot of violence. And it was like, yeah. it just didn't feel like anything. So it felt like mm. I'm never going to let anything define me again. Yeah. You know, not like God got me one time with where I'm born, you know, like he yeah. got me there. <laughs> but after this. Where is this from? Where are you from? I'm You're from Louisiana. From, I was going to say, same as um, D.C.? Yeah, no, no. Cormier. Cormier and um, Dustin Poirier. Poirier. Yeah. And uh, who else is from there? Um, Alan Joban is from down there now. He's I know real, Alan Joban, yeah. He's real Cajun. Yeah. You know, he's really? another, he's a handsome fighter. Yeah, God. he is. Good looking. He's a model, actually. I yeah, used to, like, he used to model for Calvin Klein. Dude, if you, Everybody. yeah. And yeah. then he's modeling against Calvin Qatar, you know? It's yeah. like, you gotta fight. <laughs> Bro, pick a path. Yeah. It's like, if I were that good looking, I don't yeah. think I would have got in the ring, uh, you know? I mean, what did Ali say? It's, the, it's a pretty one you gotta watch out for. Because you try, I mean, I used to do fashion week when I was younger, but I think it's just because I'm one of the only black guys out here. So it was just yeah, I, <laughs> Yeah, I thought there would be, because uh, yeah. there's Mo Maori people mm, here. Maori, yeah. Maori. Yeah, yeah you got it. And yeah. there's... Um, the islanders I, as well, like the Samoans and Tongans. Yes. They're the big fellas. Oh, yeah. There's You'll some see people. Some of them. You can't get around them. You got to. Nah. <laughs> yeah. I had to go around the block. Yeah. Get around one guy. Get in the orbit. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah. Like, yeah. No, nah, but. um, There was. um, Who else? Yeah. There's not a lot of like, I guess what mo uh, most of the universe would probably consider black, black folks here. Yeah. Is, is that true? Us. Yeah. Facts. Wow. Um, Even when I first moved to New Zealand, I was in a little town called Rotorua mm -hmm. and. Yeah, one of the only black families there, and you would have seen in the documentary. Yeah, I saw it. Definitely. Uh, even when I went back to the creek I used to play at. Oh, yeah, I saw those kids. Were kids like, they were amped up. Whoa! Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, bro, I used to play on this creek because my house was literally right there. And it's, I'm surprised it's still there. It was beautiful. Um, but again, one of the only black kids. So people didn't understand, so they'd pick on me. But my way of getting around that was dancing. Dance was my 
where I got my like street cred. You yeah. Know? Oh, it cool. was incredible, man. Watching yeah. the documentary was cool. Like, cause one thing I learned a lot is that just you're such an inner, you like to be an entertainer, huh? Yeah. You just love it. I love it. It's I love fun. Entertain- yeah. Cause I'm, I, I think for me early on, it was just to get people to like me. Yeah. That's in back in Nigeria or when I lived in Ghana for a brief, it was just my way of expressing myself. But when I moved to this country and I realized like, I danced better than everybody in my school, I was like, okay, that's my thing. Yeah. So then I kept on and I, I tried to make people like me just so I could fit in. Oh, but yeah. But again, not everyone's going to like you. And I didn't understand how to deal with that when I was 13, 14, 12. Oh, yeah. You know? like, it's wait, a nightmare. Yeah. Especially if nobody's telling you how to deal with it. I'm trying to do that now with the young guys. That's the young so guys important, around bro. Me. I try and tell them like, because I try and be honest with them. This is This is where I'm at in my career. This is when I was your age, I was here. And I give it to them raw, like let them know the truth without sugarcoating it. And then they appreciate that because then they can take from, they'll make their own mistakes, you know? Yeah. They can take from my mistakes and try not to make the same mistakes or dumb mistakes that I made. Yeah. Yeah, I think when I was a kid, I wish somebody just would have given me a little more information about what was going on. I was making up all my own rules in my head. And so then I created this own universe and checks and balances, you know? Yeah, Yeah, that's how I lived. This episode is sponsored by Prize Picks. Do you love firing on sports? Well, Prize Picks is the best daily fantasy sports app for you. You can fire on all your favorite sports like the NBA, NHL, UFC, and more. Instead of choosing teams, you choose individual players. This is what I really love about Prize Picks. Each player has a set projection, and you either choose more or less than that set projection. For example, if you believe that Connor McDavid is going to score more than half a goal and Duncan Robinson is going to score less than 21 points, then those can be your choices. If you're smart with sports and you know what players are going to perform on what nights, Prize Picks is the best app for you. Download the app and use code THEO. Prize Picks will match your deposit up to $100. You want more from delivery? Well, you can get it with the Dash Pass by DoorDash. Dash Pass is the most affordable way to get anything in your area delivered to your door. Knock, knock, who's there? Whatever you want. Helping you save money and time with every DoorDash order. Dash Pass is what I want to recommend. It makes it easy to save on restaurants, groceries, retail items, and all of your local favorites that deliver on DoorDash. That's right, with $0 delivery fees and lower service fees on eligible orders. Dash Pass pays for itself in two orders on average, making delivery even more worth it. Yum. Get more from delivery for less. Sign up for Dash Pass today only on DoorDash. Use code THEO24 and get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass. Subject to change, terms apply. Yeah, yeah. that's how I lived. Um, <laughs> when, yeah, like what was it like in Nigeria? Do you have any memories of it kind of? Heaps, yeah. Nigeria, I grew up, uh, I was born and raised there in Lagos City. And I, my family was quite well off. Um and when I say this, people normally think like, oh, he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. I was. But my I still had to do chores. I still this is why sometimes people try and help me iron my clothes. I'm like, no, I got it. Cause my dad would be like, Bola G, come on, come on, iron my shirt. Like, you know, for work, yeah, all that yeah. kind of stuff. I did the dishes, I swept the compounds, you know, clean up the kennel, the dog kennel. So I just cause my parents were rich doesn't mean I, I didn't have to work. I had to earn my keep. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I learned hard work from them as well. Even moving to New Zealand, when my mom became a nurse or she was in nursing school, my dad would let her sleep in her cleaning job. Me and him will go to the bank and clean around 4 a.m. This is in Rotorua, the, the town I was talking about, around 4 a.m., go and help her clean just so she can get enough sleep to go to school the next day. Oh, that's nice. You that know? sounds like a thoughtful guy, huh? Yeah, my dad. Oh, my dad's the best. My, my dad is a real G. He's one of the coolest gangsters I know. And I'm not talking street gangster. He's just a mathematical word contract type, like business gangster, you know? And I've said this before. Look, you know, rest in peace to Habib's dad. He was in his corner and fighting. Michael Jordan has his dad on the on the court. So is Steph Curry. A, a lot of other dads as well in football. But my dad helps me off the court. 
and I've said this again, and I'll say it again and again. The UFC knows what I got paid or what I get paid, but they don't know what I'm worth, and that's thanks to my dad. Oh yeah, because my dad is a chartered accountant by 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 trade, and he just knew how to flip my money for me. Because every time I came back from China, every time I and I, I had, I think I came back my when I lived there, I came back with six figures or five figures, high five figures, wow. and then. He tried to help me invest in. I was like, oh, I don't want to have a house. He has too like too much responsibility because I was young and dumb, and I went broke again. So I realized every time I don't listen to this guy, I go broke. I should start listening to him. So as soon as I got in the UFC, I was like, right, what do I do? First thing we did, buy my first house. Yeah. And then now we've just it's gone crazy. But again, that's thanks to my dad. But who else would you rather have in your corner than than has the best? Interest. If without him, I would have been ripped off so many times, man. Yeah. I would because people it's just in their nature. They take advantage. They, yeah. they they see like, oh, this guy's not really paying attention. Oh, he didn't he just signed that contract. He didn't even shit. So I don't sign shit without my pops looking at it and then giving me the green green light. Like, yeah, it's cool. Boom. Cause he'll he send it back with highlighted bits, amend that. That's what? In perpetuity. No, we can't have that. Amend that. But 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 yeah, it's yeah. it's interesting because sometimes you'll feel like you trust somebody else more than you would trust your own like kin or family, you know. Been there. Yeah. It's but weird. It, I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's because you, you grew up with them. We're familiar with them. Yeah, you want to branch out, you're like, I can do this myself. Yeah, it's probably it. Nah, silly. Um, what other like what was there traditions that you missed about Nigeria? Because Niger I mean it's to somebody, <laughs> it sounds fascinating to it's a lot fun. of people, you know? Yeah, no, nah, there's a lot of, see, like, even now, Afrobeats has taken over the, the globe with our sound. I think we created Afrobeats, and that's mainstream now. Um, dances that we do, the way that we dress. But again, I love my people. I love my culture. It's just the the government, like the, the greedy motherfuckers, the old ancient dudes that are still running the country, Still finding ways to just rip people off and bezel money, all that kind of stuff. It happens worldwide, but it happens really bad in Nigeria. And then they're just kind of selling the country to different entities and whatnot. But in time, the young generation, the guys now who have grown up with the internet, they're the ones who are seeing the bullshit and I guess, change it. changing it. Yeah. Um, UFC was saying that they might do their first... Uh, start a fight center in Africa. Mm -hmm. How did, that has to be. Does that feel kind of cool to you? Do you feel yeah. any connection to that? Hundred percent. No? Like I feel. That's cr humbly, I mean, bro. That's crazy. Humbly, I feel like guys like myself, Kamaru and Francis. I've even um, before Sokoju, paved the paved the way. You know, for yeah. them to do that. And now Drikas Duplessis, he's an African champion. I would never ever take that away from him, even though he tried to do that from us. But um, yeah, so we're paving the way for the next generation. And I think, I don't even think I know, I've said this. Once we grasp this MMA shit, once we grasp it, because I've seen the talent out there. I don't, look at me, I'm scrawny. I'm the, I keep saying I'm the runt of my people. You look at guys like Kamaru and Francis, there's so many of them just walking around, just Gosh. rocking the streets, bricklaying mechanics, and you see them, they just yeah. brolic as fuck. Working at a pet shop. Could you yeah, even, honestly. Yeah, like, yeah. Fucking nah, but, yeah. Selling Working. you a bunny? You're like, man, you, you missed out, <laughs> yeah, bro. You bro. should be a fighter. You should. But like, f there's so many of them over there, and they don't even have the best nutrition sometimes. They don't have the yeah. best of, you know, what we have, so. Oh, it's gonna change the game. Bruh. And now that they can see that's happened, now there's four African champions that have come from this, the country, or the continent of Africa, sorry. It's so it's, crazy. It's crazy, yeah, exactly. Because the level of inspiration of like, some kid lay and he sees the fight he gets off of his brother's phone mm. he's watching or something and then he lays in his bed and the yeah. electricity in his body i guess the like, messages all the time fucking like this yeah. could happen to me like exactly. something could happen to me they see that we've done it so yeah. it's like the four minute mile we've unlocked that in your brain like it's yeah. possible right. even me when i told my parents i wanted to fight they're like, what the f no like yeah we just left a country yeah of <laughs> yeah so it's like why why do you want to fight no 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 because yeah. it was my, my parents thought it was beneath me they wanted me to do something that was more prestigious, like being like my dad is an accountant or lawyer or you know doctor. But my grades weren't; they weren't shit. <laughs> he had fighters' grades. Yeah, he had fighters', fighters grades. grades. Yeah. yeah, I was that guy, so I was I was not cut out for that. Even though That's I like wanted Poirier, man. Yeah, he's like I got eighth grade. He's like actually I did it twice though. So I was like, well, I guess that kind of counts. I did right? form three twice. Well, some classes I had to repeat, but again. <sighs> Yeah. I wasn't cut out for it. It was my brain was always just wired differently. Whenever 
I might be dyslexic. I don't know. I've never really looked into diagnosing myself with anything because I felt uh, I don't want it to limit me. So I just, yeah. but I know the way I read words sometimes, like it, uh, it's it's even when I read a book sometimes I won't I, I won't get the whole thing. So I have to go back and read. That's why I love audiobooks and podcasts, so I can just listen and do other stuff. But yeah, reading is a little bit weird to me. But um, yeah, uh, I lost my train of thought. We were just talking about the inspiration for the kids. I mean, yeah. just like the fact that some kid could oh, yeah. like. They wanted me to be something prestigious, but nah. I, I just I'm a dreamer. I'm a daydreamer. I could sit there and I still I still do emotes as a 34 year old. Yeah, like, I'll just be in the gym and you'll see me emoting, but my head is somewhere else. Oh yeah, yeah. same man. I yeah. think sometimes yeah, I got late to the emote game. I think yeah. somehow and a lot of the fucking shit's still dropping yeah. off sometimes. You know, <laughs> I'll just do make my own ones up and I. Yeah, I'm a creative person. And I feel like it's just how you express yourself. I'm. This is this game of life. It's 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 a game of life. It's a dangerous game of life if you make it. But I feel like you can play the game how you want to play the game. This is your avatar. This is your character. You can customize this however you want, regardless of what anyone else thinks. You know, as long as you're not hurting anyone, unless it's signed on the contract. But just doing you, it's the best way. New Zealand's kind of interesting like that, I think. There's a lot mm -hmm. of interesting characters here. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'll it's take you down K Road. It's just up the up the street somewhere. Oh, is it Ketamine Road? No, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It could be. It could <laughs> oh, be. Because there's some street over here. We've seen some people. You got a guy just holding yeah. up like this. You can't tell if he's on, like, meth or yoga. Nah, you know? both. Just, nah, it's, it's crazy on K Road. It's not too bad. Like, in the daytime, uh, you, now nah, you get some crazies. Yeah, you get some crazies. I've almost been... Uh, what was one? A guy tried to stab me with a stapler. Oh, yeah. This is outside the Sky Tower. I finished, this is probably like six, seven years ago. And he was getting cheeky or something. And he wanted you to stay me. here. Yeah. I, you might leave. Yeah. <laughs> Try to stay with me. I was like, the fuck? Like a state, wait, first of all, you're homeless. Where'd you get a stapler from? <laughs> like, what is he going to do? Like hit me with a stapler. But yeah, people are crazy though. Yeah. Drugs will make you do weird things. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel lucky. I mean, I went down that road, but I'm not down yeah. it anymore. That's good. Mm. Um, Yeah, if they, well, what's interesting too, I think for Africa is, <clears throat> say if they, um, if you start to get organized fighting in a place, right? And it's real organized. Mm -hmm. It almost takes the value off of the bullshit fighting people are doing for no reason, you know what I'm saying? In the streets. Right, it starts mm -hmm. to be like, I'm, if you're a street fighter, you almost feel like I'm dumb out here because yeah. that's where at least the, you know, it starts to change where the focus of it is. Yeah. So I could see that being super helpful to like, mm. just curb a lot of that that type of violence and stuff that yeah. they have. I think um, even, if, even me, it's been a long time since anyone has tried me in the streets because now I'm kind of known. But before that, when I was only known in Auckland, you get people who just, you know, they're drunk. I'm drunk on a night out. They think, oh, this guy. Oh, yeah, you're a tough guy. You're that kickboxer guy. Hey, hey. But I'm just like, bro, I'm not going to whip your ass for free. I get paid for this shit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not even working for free. Yeah, I'm not. Nah, why would I yeah. whip your ass for free? Like, it's even now, my knockouts in the UFC, you get a bonus 50K. Uh, and I get paid crazy money to fight. Um, but I'm not, why would I do that for free? And also, yeah. if, I, if I hurt someone, it's assault with a deadly weapon because I'm a trained professional. So... I don't want to put. That's why I have. People think I have security for me. No, it's for people. Yeah. It's for the public. Because sometimes people will try and get a reaction out of you, and I'm a very patient guy, as I've said. And sometimes no. <laughs> oh <laughs> so yeah. So I'm glad I have them to be like, right, let's change the situation so that way I don't get in trouble for. Yeah, yeah. I've had a couple instances where it's like uh, I needed. A security person because yeah. my perspective wasn't good. No, yeah. like people that have come up and to start filming you and oh. they're fucking with you though. Yeah, and they're they trying get to them. get a reaction, right? Yep. yep, yep. And I like, yeah. One time I like, I don't even want to talk about it too much because then yeah. people are gonna start doing it more. No, no, no. But yeah, it was. Uh, I'm just glad. Yeah, I'm glad it just ended because it could have got bad because yeah. then you get heated and the next thing you you're know. You're a human being. You're a man. You got testosterone. and someone tries to punk you, you're like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. Okay. This allegedly. Allegedly, I might have slapped a couple people. Yeah. Allegedly. Because, okay, example, I hate when, when they do this, man. Like, I'm walking through a crowd and a guy just, let's go, champ. Out of nowhere, just slaps me on the back like four times. What the fuck? Bah! And I was like, yeah. bro, it's kind of like when Will Smith did. No. 
<laughs> he did that to, he did it to what's it called, Chris Rock. Not like that, but he did it to this reporter one time where he backhanded him, like, because the guy tried to, like, he was messing with him, trying to kiss him. He's like, bah, what the fuck, man? Like, yeah. you know, like, some of this is a reaction. What are you going to do? Yeah. I think, I, well, I mean, they say what, hit first, or hit, if you get, wait, what do you call it, wait till you get yeah. hit, or if they fuck with you. But I'm like, nah, I'm not, like, chill, son, I can't let you get close. I can't let, once you break that barrier, that range, and you seem like a threat, it's, I have to defend myself. Yeah, and your instincts are so tuned to that shit that yeah. you got to trust your instincts. My friends well. don't scare me anymore. It was funny at first, but they don't scare me anymore, jump scares, because I don't like them. Oh, you <laughs> I'm jumping very quick. out from behind the shit? No, no, when they try and scare me, I'm very quick. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I, but luckily I'm, I'm controlled with what I do, but I can just turn around and pa. Yeah. Some kung fu shit. And then like, I oh, know. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, watching you like it feels like you're watching like a um a fucking violent drawing or something, you know? Damn, I like that. That's interesting. A good, no, good adjective. Um violent drawing. You were at you know one the one I think my first fight you ever saw was me versus Gastelum. Yep. You it was amazing. I got to meet your brother. You yeah. guys walked by in the hallway. Yeah, that's right. And I got yeah. to meet David, man. And it was uh Is that when my face was all lumpy? <laughs> like a potato. <laughs> Bro, oh, that was an insane fight. Classic. One of the best fights in the history of mankind. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that fight, I think, was... And then that that was also Poirier and Holloway were on that oh, card. Oh, yeah. They fucking set it up for the co-main event. God. So then for us to have to do that at the main event... <sighs> so cool. Yeah. Um, If there's a fight in, in Africa, like on yeah. the first card, it is happened. that something that you... I'm, I'm, come on. This is, yes. Definitely, hundred yeah. percent. It, it should have happened a long time ago, but again, so many red tapes to get over. Dude, it would be like the thriller in Manila. Remember that? Yeah, bro. I mean, it's gonna. We're be going like, to Africa. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, 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 yeah. Ooh, ooh, people are gonna yeah. be outside, <laughs> fucking just. That, I mean, it, it, honestly, I, I already see. I've seen it. I've seen this. <laughs> yeah. Look, I've said this many times. But the shower is the most honest place in the planet. I feel I can just be. I'm in my birthday suit and i have the element of water running over me so it helps me just create all this white space and i could just go in my head and just create and i've seen i've predicted i've manifested i've made things happen in there that come to fruition and i've seen it so many times when i get to to, to south africa or morocco or nigeria wherever it is the mm -hmm. event is when i get there and my people see me it's just it's it's mob city it becomes it's like that when i when i last time i went to nigeria at the airport there was just it was insane. The police yeah. officers, the the street thugs, the area boys who were doing four one nine, like they all just they, yeah. yeah, they fuck with me. Even the people like in the comas are fucking fucking <laughs> <up>. <laughs> the, the dead bodies on the road. Just like oh shit, I just want you. Yeah, I'll die tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> nah, but I love I love the love oh. I get out there, man. I love the love I get out there. Well, the energy of that would be crazy. Um, mm. Do you and would that probably be versus DDP for the yeah. belt? You think? Drinkers, yeah, definitely. Wow. I'm. Oh, there's some things that were meant to happen. Uh, they summoned me. They summoned me. I'm sure this is out there now. Eugene said some stuff, but they summoned me. They summoned me for 300, and I was like, "Yep, let's roll." But their side didn't want it, so I was like, "Well, fuck it. I'm just gonna keep." Who DDP side? Yeah, they didn't want it. Wow. But I, I, you know, they just fought Strickland, so maybe he had a little bit of niggly injuries and stuff. But hey, we all we all got little you know nigg niggles and whatnot. So yeah, um, but I've I've fought injured for the last how many fights so that's why i took time off just to let my body heal and it has healed and yeah um, i'm sure there'll be more injuries it just happens through training like what we oh, do for bro, work i can't even imagine it just constantly there's always something your finger your toe your back your legs your whatever it might be your ankle there's yeah i heard something. my neck the other day just looking for something yeah <laughs> what, out here yeah i was just yeah. kind of looking like that and i was like oh fuck <laughs> something got me be like that man well you're 43 i forget yeah shit's it's crazy man do you, you train at all what do you do mm -hmm. like yep i do yoga oh I run nice Are about you flexible? 12 miles a week yeah i'm doing pretty good man nice because on stage i want to be able to show as much as Dexterity. i can dexterity you're and very so animated important. yeah you know it's real important uh because i like to move and also when you move sometimes a new thought can come into your head because you hit emotion, and that's Dang. what keeps me inspired. That's all dancing. That's what that's what happens. That's how you freestyle. Wow. Next movement, it just leads to the next movement, and it can create a new thought. That's beautiful the way you put that. I didn't realize it was like that for you as well. Yeah, sometimes I'll be like, oh, man, if I just hit that, and then a, a, it's almost like if you use your instrument, mm. it will use you kind of yeah. in a way. And, you know, sometimes I like feel that. Yeah. Um. 
what about like, yeah, Demetrius Johnson was talking about to beat DDP, you would need, uh, you need to brush up on your ground game. Oh, for me? Yeah. Yeah, I got some. I got a little some. Do you prefer to fight guys where it's more like, because some people like to fight up top, like Poirier is like yeah. that. He likes to, and it's fun to watch him there, you know? And some of the fights where it's on the ground, honestly, mm. respect mm. 100%, but they can be a little less exciting. Yeah, um, especially for the fans, because they've been there since five hours, six hours drinking, yeah. and they're just like, oh, stand them up, ref. I enjoy grappling. <laughs> I enjoy I love it. Uh, but no one's been able to keep me in that position. That's the thing. In how many UFC fights, and people think, oh, he's about to get exposed in this fight. It's like, actually, the only person would know, Jan, but he didn't do anything. He just used his weight. He didn't try and finish me. Yeah. He didn't really try and beat me up to the last like eight seconds. But yeah, he just wanted to win the round. So he kept me and used his weight. And I wasn't really used to that at the at the minute at the time. So um, it's a good point. Yeah, Costa yeah. couldn't catch. Yeah, a lot of the guys they can't catch you, so you can't say, "Hey, this guy doesn't like to go to the ground." It's like, well, if you can't get him to the ground, yeah. he I'm, shouldn't lay down there and meet a guy down there. What am I gonna do? Butt scoot? And be like, come <laughs> on, buddy, I'm gonna get you. Nah, um, I'm I'm great on the feet, so I like to keep the fight standing. But I do enjoy the clinch. I enjoy the clinch. I enjoy I enjoy the ground as well, but. In the gym, it's different than in a fight, and I'm getting more comfortable on the ground in the gym, which makes me, you know, even better in a fight. But um, yeah, just no one's been able to like take me and keep me there to see anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah that shouldn't be like, a, yeah, that's not a fault of yours. Mm. It's interesting because sometimes you'll Do just better. hear a lead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you'll hear a lead and you'll be like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, not. I mean, fake news. <clears throat> it happens all the time. They just throw something out there, hope it sticks, and. Everyone latches onto it, and then that can just be clicks. Oh, yeah. Clicks, views, attention. That turns to money for them. Is that the same in New Zealand, you feel like? Yeah, everywhere. Worldwide. Now everyone got these, so everyone just thinks, like, you. people just run up on you and start filming. Like, someone tried to get a... Randomly, what was I doing? I was about to go fishing, so I was filling up the skis. And then um, a guy is uh, waiting there and watching me. I was like, you want to take a pic? Okay, let's get step away from the gas pump. Because it says no phone. We took a pic, and then he goes, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, so um, what? I was like, what are you doing? I'm not <laughs> like a random pop-up interview. Yeah. Who do you think you are, TMZ? I wonder what may, like in our society, I guess we just see that more. Because you see like younger younger people do it without even thinking that it's weird. Wow. Entitlement. Yeah. It's entitlement. And I've had people even say like, oh, but you're famous. I'm like, fuck no, I'm a human being. Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Just because... Look, I've always said this, fuck fame, but I like I like the perks. If I had known what fame would have brought, I would have just rather been rich, you know? I only wanted to get famous so I could be rich, so I can have money, so I can do whatever I wanted to whenever I wanted to, the yeah. life I live right now. So, But the fame was not what I expected, and I'm grateful for it, but at the same time, I had to... I had to learn how to adapt to the newfound fame when it came. Oh, it's heartbreaking, some of it. Yeah. I oh. mean, people don't want to hear that. I know it's like people don't want to hear that. A part of you disappears that you didn't even realize was about to leave, and I didn't even get to write everything down that I knew about that guy. Yeah. Like, and that's the shit that sometimes makes me um, kind of bum. Like, I don't know. I'm not trying to sound like self-pity or anything. No, but, no, no. Be but honest, there's a, Be vulnerable. Yeah, there's a cost to everything, yeah. you know? And there's a part of me, it's like, man, I, I don't even... I, I wish I remembered a little bit more what I was like because I really liked myself then. And then now it's like a different self. Yeah. You almost have to learn about a new self. Yeah, you have to make make peace with your new life. Like, yes, that's the thing. Yeah, make peace with your new life. This is it now. This is my life now. I think I did that about two years ago because, okay, <clears throat> I used to love gro grocery shopping. I'd have my headphones in and I'd just be blah, blah, just listen to a podcast or music. And Mac or more maybe. Yeah, you know, sliding around on the cart. That was fun. I don't do that anymore, you know, because the grocery store, will, you know, you just get every step. Oh, can I get a photo? And then it becomes a meet and greet. And I'm like, I, no, boundaries. I've had that before where people just around me. And my boy, Matt, was like, bro, you're just like a toy they pass around. Because <laughs> yeah. people were just like, oh, my turn, my turn, my turn. And some of them wouldn't even know anything about fighting. That's the worst. And then they just want to. Who wanna, are you? My husband said something. Oh, my God. The, the yeah. worst is when, especially when bitches try and like, who are you? I'm like, it's all good. Don't worry about it. No, but like, oh, that who, kills me. Who yeah. are you? And I'm like, baby, who are you? I don't know who yeah. you are either. It's it's mutual. They do it on <laughs> purpose to lower they, you. But they think it does. But I'm like, bitch, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, who are you? Who, who are you? I'm like, well, who are you? <clears throat> and the thing I truly enjoy meeting people for the first time. 
because it's rare for me these days. So when I meet someone and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know you. I'm like, no, it's okay. My, I'm Israel. What's your name? Oh, nice to meet you. And yeah. I can actually meet them without them having a preconceived notion of who they think I am from TV or YouTube or my promos or anything like that. They can actually meet me for me, face value. right? Yeah. So I enjoy that. But people think I, because of how they would be if they were in my position, they think, I'm going to be like, everybody knows me. No matter where I go, I still introduce myself. Yeah. Because it's just rude if you don't. Like, it's well. weird when people don't. <laughs> but no, I agree. One of the things that I miss, I used to love meeting people. It was yeah. one of my favorite things to do. Because it was like a new, it was almost like a brand new show. You got a new saying. chance to feel a certain way with somebody. You could brighten mm -hmm. their day. You could do it. You could have there were anything. The world was any, all the options were there. Yeah. And then the fact that that's not the case um, mm. sometimes now, it's a, uh, it's a blessing. I'm not saying that, yeah. but it is a bummer sometimes because I yeah. miss that thing like, yeah. oh, here's a new like space I get to play in. You could make things up. Yeah. It was just fun. I love that. Like yeah. I said, new people or new countries, whenever I go there, like I was just in Switzerland and I met a couple of new people, but I was there for some uh, for some work. And um, yeah, new culture, new food. Even the weather was muggy, but I loved it. I was like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm experiencing what it's like to be in Switzerland when it's cold. And I saw the sun out of three days. I saw the sun once. Wow. You know, and the guy who even brought me there was like, yeah, last time I saw the sun was like two weeks ago. You know, it's different out there. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the the the, the vibe and just meeting new people. It's like this world's too big, man. Like we can't all just be in our own little bubble. Yeah, you it's know. so important to get out, man. Even coming here was interesting. Coming to New Zealand. First time? Yeah. Uh, Seeing what it's like. It's, yeah. I had no idea what it was going to be like. Yeah. People are like, we don't have any, uh, we don't have any uh, snakes, you know? Yeah, we don't. Nothing dangerous. I'm not, like, the, not, the, not these kinds, yeah. but there's some snakes in the streets. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, you don't have a fucking ozone layer either. I'm Bro. Like, fucking, dude. My guy, like I'm how telling black, you. When you got here, how black yeah. were you? Or no, you I was lighter? black. I was black. Were you black. really? Yeah, I swear. But because I've been here, I think I've been like, in, in two, maybe light skin yeah. now, semi light skin. In two days, people are gonna start calling me yeah. Nelly around here. I think. <laughs> no, but um, for me, I went fishing the other day. Uh, no, this is this one the other week. So I thought, you know what? I'm black. I'm protected by melanin. By God, I'm, yeah. By God, Amen. Ordained. But um, <laughs> yeah. For me, I was. I don't need sunblock. But I put on my tattoos just to kind of protect them. But then my skin started peeling the next day, like my shoulders, because the life jacket was on me. So my shoulders were peeling, my neck, my face. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And then someone told me, oh, you're sunburned. And I was like, what? And I was like, oh, that's right. Because in Nigeria or in the continent of Africa, we have an ozone layer. They don't have that here. So when I get hit by the sun here, it's, yeah. It's like God's not even wearing a condom out here. <laughs> Act just raw. It's like, <laughs> my God. Raw dogging you, the sun no, is. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's really crazy. You're like. Have you been to any beaches here yet? <clears throat> we're going tomorrow to maybe Waihiku. Uh, or Wai oh, Waihiki Island. Waihiki Island. Island. Okay, yeah, you enjoy it there. Yeah, yeah some nice beaches there. Yeah, but people are the like. Black get, sand got, ones. <clears throat> people are like, you got to get out. We just got here. People are like, you got to leave. You got to get out. Yeah. You need to go to here. You need to. It's just like everybody wants you to leave. It's yeah. like we just got here. Nah, there's some fun stuff in Auckland. <laughs> Auckland's fun. I like the city because. Yeah, what makes you stay here? Cause you, my you gym. Know. My gym. Really? Definitely. My gym, 100%. I would have been fucked off by now. Like gone. So, or just gypsying, traveling around. But my gym keeps me here because they're my people and they're the ones that got me to where I'm at. So that's loyalty. And yeah, that's I, huge. You got a great guys over there. Dan yeah. Hooker's there. Yeah. I love yeah. Dan. Is he a cool he's guy? The he's the best. He's the best. Bro, he seems so entertaining. Yeah, man. He's he's an asshole, but he's the best. I yeah. love him. <laughs> uh Carl yeah. France. Yeah. Um there's so many guys I'm sure yeah. that I don't know. I don't know a lot of the fighters. That is new ones coming up as well. Like Carlos is now in the UFC. Kevin's in the UFC. Even Tyson Pedro is training with us now. Tyson will be coming tonight. Um, to see the show. Oh, sweet, um, man. Yeah. So I, I can't wait for that. How was last night? How was, how was the show? It was good. Yeah? Yeah, I thought it was good. It was kind of scary because you don't know New what territory. you can say. Yeah, and yeah. you don't know. You, you'll be telling a story, and you're like, oh, shit, they don't have this business. Does, I'm about does, to does, it, does it relate? Yeah. So you, now you've gone six minutes into a story. Yeah. You just have to give up. You're like, like a senior sometimes. citizen or yeah. something. You know? <laughs> I get the references sometimes when I, like, Maybe even Eddie Murphy, Delarius. There was a few references I didn't understand when I watched it the first time, because I was like, I didn't, I you know, I didn't live in America, so I didn't know what he was talking about. But yeah, you get older, so you understand. Like ah, yeah, that's that, that's that shit he was talking about. Have you ever looked back at your buttocks, that rear carriage, baby, that wagon, and thought, hey, I deserve better? 
If not, then you should this year introduce yourself and your behind to the best with Tommy John's super soft underwear, loungewear, and pajamas. Their tri-blend and modal fabrics stretch four times more than competing brands. And Tommy John moves 16 different ways to give you plenty of breathing room. Mm. Watch that body breathe. It's no surprise Tommy John's sold over 20 million pairs of their lint-free, fuzz-free underwear, all featuring their famous no-wedgie guarantee. Keep that crack pristine. Wearing Tommy John makes me feel like, hey, you got this, baby boy. Shop Tommy John and get 20% off your first order right now at TommyJohn.com slash Theo. That's right. Save 20% for a limited time at TommyJohn.com slash T-H-E-O. TommyJohn.com slash Theo. See site for details. When I started podcasting, uh, having an online store was really the furthest thing from my mind. You know, I remember we first started and uh, just put something through um, a universal type of shop and sold it through Instagram. And then people wanted different things. And um, and that's when we turned to Shopify. Shopify helped us. You know, at, at every point where it was like, okay, now we're trying to be too big. Let's scale it down. Um, or, hey, let's we can do more. People want other stuff. Shopify was there in that sense. It's so easy using Shopify. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. And right now you can sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash Theo, all lowercase. Just go to shopify.com slash Theo now to grow your business. No matter what stage you're in, shopify.com slash Theo. What, um, so the gym keeps you here. That's yeah. huge, man. Yeah. If not, I would have been gone. I would have been gypsying around. But also, my family's here. I got siblings in Australia as well. They're, they're, they're gypsying around. But I think the gym keeps me here. And I, I like the fact that New it's Zealand's important. New Zealand's not too grandiose in a sense. Like, Auckland's not so big where it's going to take me. Unless it's traffic, it's gonna take me like hour and something to get across town. You know? Yeah. I don't like that. In Sydney or certain Australian territories, it takes you an hour and a half to go from here to here. And I'm like, that's a no from me. Yeah. 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 No, I think this is a. It's a super unique place. I'll say this: it's one of the most unique places that I've been. Mm. I wish I was gonna get to travel around the country more. Mm. I'm gonna come back and do it again. And South maybe, Island next time. That's what everybody South, says. Yeah, and you're like, go. shit. I wish I would have asked anybody. Yeah, South Island. But um, but it's great though. It's been everybody's been super nice. Mm. Like um, it's interesting what how, what people think of what life means mm. here. It's kind of interesting. I it's, find. A, it's a bit more. F- compared to the maybe where you're from, laid back. You'd say. Yeah, they, yeah, they don't take themselves as serious, you know. And yeah. I think it allows for a lot more peace, probably, mm-hmm. in their own world. Yeah, yeah. and um, a lot of individuality here. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing I could see, like, because you are like a hyper individual. It yeah. seems like so I could see it'd be like, oh, this makes sense. Why yeah. this is a very it's this a- what it cultivated me in a sense because I was trying to fit in, but I wasn't meant to fit in. You know, I don't even sound like I'm from here. Right. Because I was influenced by TV and all that kind of stuff. But um, individuality here or individualism, you still get that crabs in the back bucket mentality. Like people will try and do that. So, oh, people don't want you being fancy here. Nah, nah, they don't nah. want you getting braces here. Nah, man. And it's kind of <laughs> weird. It's like, hey, bro, yeah. don't, what are you going to be the fucking mayor, yeah, man? They, they, want, yeah, they want you to be. Like, they'll try to support you. And I think it's worldwide, but it's a weird thing with Australia and New Zealand. I can't remember what the history is, but you downplaying your achievement. Yeah. You know, a lot of humility. Yeah. No, but that's not, that's, f- not, that's not real humility, though. Okay. That's, that's bullshit. That's like saying, like, you don't want to seem bigger than yourself. Like, if I know I'm the man, I'm going to say I'm the fucking man. Like, I know, I know who I am because I'm treated, you know, wherever I go. But they don't like you saying that outwardly here because it's uh, not humble but i'm like nah that's not that's that's being fake because i'm not really expressing how i feel like example one of the national teams will win something crazy like the world cup or whatever 
they get on the mic and it's like, oh yeah, no, we did all right. Yeah, we just want to thank the Lord Jesus for. I'm like, bro, say how you feel. Say yeah. it with your chest. Like, fucking did it. Yeah, like you know, like I'm, I want I want people to express. And I've I've said this already. There was a viral video that went when I won this um, sports sportsman of the year in New Zealand award, and I gave the speech, and it went viral for a while but it wasn't going to change the culture but just i'm just stating the fact i was like like i'm being humble is when dan hooker punches me in the face that's real humility right because then i have to address like okay how do i deal with that you know when um carlos kicks me in the leg you know that's real humility like but me trying to be confident yeah but me trying to like say be subservient to make other people Uh. feel feel better about themselves Put it this way, even recently. No, it's uh, interesting. It's like you don't want to be yeah. subservient to your own spirit. Yeah. And you know, you know, it's like you because I'm doing myself not, a disservice. Right. Yeah. So for me, even recently, I realized how do I put this without seeing it seeming pompous? I realized I've lived I've lived the peasant life, if you put it this way. I I you know, I've my last time my, my last job was September 4th, 2013. Next day I moved to China. I planned for months to make that happen. I failed three times before it actually happened. Um, I've lived that life. I've lived for the weekend, all that kind of stuff. But then the bigger I got, I still fell into that trap where I didn't want to seem like I was too cool, you know? And oh, yeah. I, yeah. I get afraid a lot of times of uh, being proud. I'm almost, it's a yeah. weird thing. I'm almost being proud of yourself in yeah, a way. You like, should be. You don't want but, people to know you're proud of yourself. Yeah, but I didn't want to seem like I'm too cool. So I still try and relate to the commoners, if you will, like when I'm out. You know, if I'm at a bar, yeah, you want to seem outside. normal. Yeah, I want, and I am normal. And you are, still, and you are. But I can still walk around the street. But I just know, I know I'm the shit. But I know I ain't shit. Right. That's like a a good balance to have. It's always fluctuating. I know I'm the shit, and sometimes I ain't shit. <laughs> so it's a good, it's a good balance to have. I think, it's, I think it's a good balance for anybody. It yeah. is. And yeah, you're right. I think the society here maybe they have a different approach to some of that. But mm. and maybe some of that needs to evolve. You know, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's 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 okay to you're just learning about your own spirit and how do I navigate this? No one gave me a book and being like, "This is how you now you're famous." Here's what you do. Nah, even me sometimes I I might not be in the mood. I might be having a shit day. The day my cat died, I was having a really shit day, and the guy at the gas station again was like, "Oh my god, bro, bro, hold up, hold up, it's, bro, Adesanya, bro, can you talk to my cat?" I'm like, uh, what the, "Bro, my cat just died yeah. this morning. I don't really, I'm not." And he's like, "Oh." Oh, good G. Oh, I'm like, and, and I now felt you bad. Feel bad. And I was like, I give know. me the phone. And then I grabbed the phone and I was talking to him. I was like, wait, hang on. Nigga, I'm pumping gas. Like, <laughs> fuck, go away. I was like, bro. And then I'm a bad guy forever. And then that's the only story they have about me. But again, I've, I'm comfortable with that now. When people have a bad story about me, I'm like, they probably deserved it. Because <laughs> when people bring manners and respect, I reflect that back. And they get more out of me. I stick around with them. And I even if... Even if I, I'm, I'm too, I'm, I'm in a rush. I still mm-hmm. try and make people feel seen. Yeah. I still want to make them feel like we connected. Yeah, you know, just even for a brief moment, like, bro, I'm not doing photos right now. I'm in a rush, but I love you. I love you. I love you, and I just move. Yeah, but again, I'll try and connect with them and let them know like, I really appreciate you. But um, I think it's the best that you can do, man. I really do. I'm human. Amen. Yeah, I'm human. So it's that's cr- all. and it's a crazy thing that you don't learn how to be, and it's. There's there's so many like nice parts about it, but there's there's the parts about it that are f- like especially nowadays with like vi- the viralness of things, you can't ever go back, you know. Yeah. And so then it's um anyway, we're gonna start to sound like a couple yeah. of psychopaths. <laughs> <laughs> we keep <laughs> talking it's about like, it, yeah. No, but, but it's but interesting. It's, 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 man. No, but the thing is, it's relatable. It's uh, to to you and me. It's relatable because you you live this life as well. And I don't get to talk about this with most people. That's a good point, man. Like my friends, they can understand because they see it, you know, but. Most people don't get it. Yeah. You know, they'll never get it because they're not in this position. Yeah, I've been afraid to, like, I've been afraid sometimes to get, like, like, I have a nice home, you know, I've been afraid Mm -hmm. to, like, even go look sometimes at, like, a real, like, fancy home or something, or Mm -hmm. maybe they had a little bit more space or a garage where I could put two cars or something, you know, like. You can only put one in your garage now? Yeah. Really? So I just, like, because I think there's a big part of me that. You be humble. Well, it's like, I don't know who would I be. Yeah. I don't know how I who I am if I'm in this. If you if have I'm the extra fence. space for the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think... It's like I just... I know I it's... So much of my life I've been able to like... Contr- like manage what's going on. And it's gotten a little bit tougher for sure over the mm. past few years. Mm. But I'm like, if I had another element, then will I even... 
no, my, like, am I going to get further away from, like, nah, you'll be fine. myself, I, think I guess? Knowing who you are, you'll be fine. You'll be able to handle having a nicer house. It's just bit, things are easier, you know? But money would have changed me. If it was going to change me, it would have changed me years ago. Probably about uh, four years ago, it would have changed me. If, if money was going to change me. You get to a certain point when you make so many M's and you're just like, it doesn't really matter because you're already, as long as I can put a full tank of gas in, I don't even check the price of gas. I just put yeah, a full tank that's in. That's when I know I'm good. Like, yeah. I'm good. Because I remember the days when I'd be like, yo, um, can, I get, can I get $10 on number five, please? Yeah. Thank you. I remember those days. I did that. I was me. Even $5. Just $5 on number five, please. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yeah. But now I could just go, <laughs> fill, boom. I didn't even got to go inside. I just use my card. Bang. That's when I know I'm comfortable. And as long as I can do that, I'm good. Anything else is just bonuses. Yeah. You know, it's just bonuses. Like I said, I would rather be rich than famous. But I do, I do appreciate the fame because it brought me this life. So I'm grateful. When you're a good entertainer, and that's one of the interesting things to see too. It's like, mm. it's a blessing. And it's like, one of the cool things about being a good entertainer is sometimes God will even move this entertainer along so that more people can see him. Yeah. You know, it's like I was interviewing this guy, Billy Strings, a couple of weeks ago, this guitarist, and he grew up in uh, Michigan, like in a, just like drug and like oh, wow. big drug culture, like people all around him dying, you know, Dang. opioids, everything. And he has a big, a tough time with like people coming to see him and paying tickets to see and stuff. And, wow. and I was like, but dude, you don't know, like the guy who's cleaning up after your show, mm. he might be listening to your music that's making him, keeping his fucking day. You know, it's like, yeah. sometimes God uses all of us as like candles, I feel yeah. like at certain oh, moments. We're all vessels. Know? Yeah. We can all be used at any moment, any um, given moment. I felt you need that. another I'm water? Sure. I'm good for now. I'm okay. good for now, yeah. Now you're, you're a guy, on, you're great on the mic, so you've definitely been a vessel, you know, at times. Yeah. I think that was, how I actually became a fan of you wasn't just your comedy. It was, it was, it was, um, one clip, if you probably scroll up to our first conversation, I would I would have sent it to you. It was something of you being vulnerable on the mic. And I I think you even got teary. And I was just, I related to what you said. And I was just like, and that's when I DM'd you. And I was like, oh, this guy follows me. So I followed you back and then talked like, bro, I really appreciate you being this vulnerable. I can't remember what it was, but I, I felt that. I felt that. I think even Burt Kreischer, same thing. He was talking to Tom and talking about his daughters and something and how he feels like he's not doing enough and whatnot. Oh, yeah. And I was just like... That shit hits me, bro. I'm a softy, man. Oh I am, yeah, I'm a softy. I'm, I'm like, I'm hard as fuck. Cause look what I did for <laughs> yeah, a job. Yeah. But I am a softy. Like, oh, my heart strings. Sometimes some something will just hit me, and I'm just like, yeah. <sighs> oh, I see two people hug at an airport, and yeah. I just start. Fucking oh, you know, falling. yeah. It's or like, somebody waiting with flowers for somebody to come. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, those I'm moments, looking. man. Yeah. I'm crying in the handicap stall. People <laughs> like, what's going on? Uh, no, it's interesting, man. Well, I don't think I started to evolve. Like, I got into recovery from drugs and alcohol like probably mm. six years ago. Really? And that's when I started for the first time in my life. Before that, I'd been kind was of it a, bad, bad. It wasn't crazy bad, but yeah. it was getting like a you little were an adult. bit. You were just living your life. Yeah, but it yeah. was like I didn't. I wanted to have some cocaine sometimes. Yeah. So I got afraid to have a beer because I was worried I would have cocaine. Uh, one leads to the other. Yeah. yeah. And I never had a drinking problem, but I was yeah. just, if I do have a beer, then if somebody has cocaine, I'm done. Yeah. You know? Even me right now, like, so I lost my license because of this DUI. Oh, you got silly a DUI? Yeah, I know. First one. <laughs> but um, it was a silly <laughs> mistake. I had dinner, two cocktails. It's it's out now. But um, then there was some reports. I couldn't speak about it then because it was still an ongoing court case. But then there was reports coming out saying he was two times over the legal limit and all this. And I, it's no excuse. I just, if I'm going to go out, out, yeah. I have people to drive for me. But this was just dinner and two cocktails. So I was 0 .07 over the legal limit. And everyone else that they've had this and they've had their license, they were like, how come you were in court? All I got was a fine. And they did. And I'm like, yeah, but you're not me. This New Zealand media finally got me, so they wanted to oh, got him. They want to parade him, but I, I handled it well. And um, shout out to the judge for being kind and thoughtful, and could see this is just a silly mistake that this guy can learn from. He's done more good than, and this doesn't take away from that. So I'm I'm grateful for that. But um, even me at the moment, I haven't drank since fuck last year. Oh really? Yeah. I just look. I I went. I had this procedure done with uh, stem cells last year. And then I was like, you know what? I want my body to heal properly. So I just kind of abstained. 
Yeah, and keep all the negative toxins out. Exactly. And I started, I have my one of my boys who's a chef for 13 years. He works for me now. He, fuck, every day I eat is a culinary experience. One of the best investments I've made in the last four years. Really? I love it. Oh, my God. Fuck buying all that kind of shit. Like, get a chef. It's the best. If you love food and you can't afford it, get a chef. Holy oh, shit. damn. It's the best. Every can day is- Can quesadillas a, and everything? Every, he can, his phrase, I can cook anything. Oh, my God. He can cook anything. So, for me- um, mm, I would have something. I would have yeah. fish at night. I think we're going to have horse maybe sometime in two weeks. I want to try some horse tacos. Bro, they got like, reindeer in damn Sweden. Yeah. I was oh, at a really? restaurant. They pull up with the fucking R deer, yeah. bro. I lived play, in though. China. I, I didn't question too many things I ate there, but I ate some things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ate some. I know I've eaten donkey. I don't know if dog or cat. I can't remember. I've eaten pigeons, eaten alligator. Oh, um, yeah. My buddy just got a read on some um, penguin meat. Ooh. Damn. Penguin. What would that be like? Because it's fluffy feathers and then it's, I yeah. guess, insulation and then meat. Would it be lean? No, nah, they're fat. They're fat. They're blubber. They'd be a little bit of marbling. Yeah, it might be, quite be nice. Nice. kind of a marble chicken. Yeah. Maybe. Ooh, yeah, it's a bird. Yeah, it might be a marble chicken, like a steak chicken. Yeah. Or do you have to cook it medium rare, or do you have to cook it all the way through? I don't know. I hope it's headless, though. That's, <laughs> yeah. The head looks too cute. Yeah. That's the thing. I think their their PR is so cute. You're yeah. like, happy feet. Yeah, yeah. You're like, damn, yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, happy feet. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're the damn French bulldogs of the yeah, of the north, you know. Actual, yeah, they kind of look like them without the face. Yeah, so maybe I, I don't know, but I'm I, I got to email him back. But yeah. um, so when you do look at like, so you've had some time off and stuff. Mm -hmm. When you was it to like, did you want to recalibrate what you because you've you've gotten to achieve your dreams, right? Yeah. And there's over something and over and over and over again. Yeah, like I mean, it's yeah. unprecedented, you know. Like you've mm -hmm. you mastered what you set out to do. Mm. So then it's interesting because now you're a master who is um, who's already achieved everything you can achieve mm -hmm. in the game. But there's still more that I want to do for myself. Right. I that's one. I, I, I yeah. guess I'm wondering, like, how does that how do you start to separate those two? And what is that even? You know, I haven't like mastered the game yet. I'm still learning every day. Even right now, we're working again on my jab because I'm changing it up now because there's so much footage on me. People can watch the oh. smart coaches and they can kind of game plan. Like my question mark kick was fucking everyone up early on. Got to like maybe after the Robert Whitaker fight, maybe the Romero fight. No, Costa fight. Actually, Costa avoided it, but he he didn't fall. He fell for a different kick. But um, so from that fight, people kind of like know the question marks coming, so they all scared of it. My jab was vicious. It still is, but I'm just bringing it back. I'm tuning it up again. So it's 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 constant evolution, constant learning. Every time. And with my grappling as well. I want to show it off. I do want to show it off in the cage. I did a little bit in my fight with Alex in New York. A little bit. But um, either. you want to more. You yeah, want to. So I want you still to. have things you want to do. Fuck yeah. Oh, wow. It's, fuck the belts and all that. It's more about highlights. Yeah. For me, I'm a highlight guy. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's what's interesting. Yeah. It's like, that's what I was wondering. I was like, does he miss some I of the trash the talking and just the fucking, yeah. you know, like. When it's raw, when it's honest. Yeah. Like me and Costa. It was good because I didn't like the guy. He didn't like me. Barachino, is that his name? Barachina. I didn't. Barachina. Whatever. He, yeah. He's yeah. A, so again, like he's a guy that when I fought him, and again, I had a lackluster performance against Romero because he didn't want to engage. So people were like, oh, fuck him. And it was, I have the most exciting title fight in history and the most boring title fight in history. I do it all. <laughs> but um, after that fight, people were talking shit like, oh, this and that. Right, right, right. He's a boring fighter. And it's weird. I, I see it now. They just forget. They forget. And I'm like, bro, I gave you so much classics. <laughs> so quick people forget, man. Yeah, but then um, for me, when that fight came about, I didn't like him. And he reminded me of every jock I had. Oh, yeah. I remember like, he saying just, that in the He dog. was very, you know, good looking. Oh, and like, yeah. Just very muscular. Conditioner. Yeah. Oh, bro, the guy. And he was talking so much to everyone. And then the streets was like, he went three rounds with Romero. He went three rounds with Romero. I'm like, yeah, I went five rounds with Romero. He's like, well, you didn't do shit. Fuck you. And I was like, okay, watch this, watch this. So when I fought him, I remember I just, I was so, I was dialed in, bro. I was dialed in. I remember in. watching that. We went yeah. to, a, after the show, we went to a bar. I think we're in yeah. Indiana somewhere. We were in the Apex at the time. Oh, not the Apex, um, the Fight Island. That was Fight Island. And yeah, I, um, I took him out. I took him for for a ride. I took it. I that took his virginity he couldn't catch as well. Him. Nah, he didn't touch me once apart from he in the legs. As well. I, I did seeing that. Yeah, and he just approved hundred percent. Well, it's also in some cultures, it's more 
it's, it's dominance. It's, it's just more appropriate too. Yeah, but I mean, like for me, I just felt it was the most dominating thing I could do to him because he was in that position. So yeah, in Brazil, being gay is just like two guys dancing. Yeah, know, or um, just dancing. high five. Yeah. You know. Boy, oh, so they'll have some high fives that'll last a Look long that. time. And look at the time. technique. Look at the squat on the man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's crazy, man. bro. Raw dog, them. It was good. <laughs> it was a good time. I enjoyed um, it. What no did you regrets. Think of, what did you think of his uh, of his fight with Whitaker? It's a good fight. I liked it. I liked his jab in that fight. Yeah, I was like, okay, he came back. But man, that end of the first round when you when you rocked him with the wheel kick. Yeah. Woo! Did not expect that. And then again at the end of the round, so he got saved by the bell, came back, and Whitaker just. Just outguts them. He just outguts them. I thought it was close. Yeah, I same. thought maybe maybe Costa might have won. I felt he might have won. But then when they gave it to Whitaker, I was like, huh. Okay, well, it wasn't a robbery, but I thought Costa probably had it. Um, but, yeah, he was good. He, he looked good in that fight. He's He wasn't the same after this. Everyone keeps telling me that. You ruined that, man. Really? You think that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think after that fight, he wasn't the same. He was on a run. He had this. He, I'll tell you this. You look at the fight. You look at the first round, the way he looked at me, and they look at the second round when he's like, the, the, like you see his face, the demeanor changed. I love those moments. You take their soul away. You just know, like, this guy knows he doesn't want to be locked in here with me. And it's like during a video game, but their controller's gone. Yeah. It, it, bad dream for him. Bad dream for him. So it's like, oh, wow. yeah, I, I like that moment. Um, But again, I like the guy. He's funny. He's, a, I think he's an entertainer. He's, I, he's I good on he's Twitter. Uh, it, he's got a... Secret juice, secret juice, and all that. It's um, fun. There's, there's so many. Uh, that's one of the thing I was wondering. Do you miss sometimes just in the past year of being off or so? Like, do you miss some of the entertainment? Like, like because there's been a lot of great, like the trash talk and everything's that kind of like you know, like like Strickland's yeah. so ridiculous. Like him and MGK yeah. are arguing. Like that shit is why it's hilarious though. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you laugh at some of it? Like. Like it's just I didn't so really I didn't really pay attention to it. I was like, oh Strickland. I mean Strickland, you put him in public, it's uh it's a different story. Yeah. Yeah, he's always got something to say, man. Yeah. Um is that a fight that you feel like you want to go like oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Come on, man. I don't like, know. I don't yeah. know what like if yeah. guys get like um That's it. They're like I oh, care no, I, about going and vi revisiting that not because of the fight yeah. but just cuz you care or not care. So for me, when Pereira beat me he beat me the first time. I went to Brazil. He beat me, knocked me out. And then I didn't chase it. I was like, you know what? I'm done with kickboxing. And then he said he got motivated because he saw me, you know, talking about him and then decided I'm going to go MMA and chase this guy. And he did. And then got to the UFC. They fast-tracked him. He got to me. They and did fast-track him. Yeah. I, I mean, it is what it is. I don't yeah. blame them. It's, it was a Look at what we have now. We have classics. So, um... He beat me in this almost similar fashion in the way I was beating his ass. And then in the last round, he just had that spirit and just something behind him, some kind of Shinigami. He just came and just beat me. And I was just like, fuck, again? How is this guy? And then I let it go. And then I just knew this is the last one. Like, after this, I'm, I'm done with this guy. But I have to get him now. I have to get him now. And in that moment, when I, when I got it done, I got it done. It took me six years. And then I went after his kids too. I was like, "Yeah, where you at?" Because I'm a petty motherfucker. Sometimes you want to, you know, just let the lineage know what's up. Of course not, like because you don't want their kid fighting your kid at school or something. Yeah, nah, I won't even go to the same school. But like the fact is, I had to teach his kids a lesson because of what they did prior. And this took me what six years to accomplish. With Strickland, it wouldn't take me that long. Uh, let me just get through DDP first. Let me handle. I, I look. I look. I look to the next fight. Never. I look ahead like a little peak at the future, but I don't try and focus on it. And I just know the Strickland fight will come back around. And I'm in, I'm in a good place now, health-wise, mentally. And I know exactly what happened in that fight that just wasn't for me. He's a great fighter. Put a, he's also a good champion. What a reign. I mean, he did what he did. Uh, Who's Strickland? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, he did what he did. Yeah. Everybody can beat me up, so I should yeah. laugh at him. No, but I mean, like, he did what he did. Look, even the way he beat me, it was spectacular. It was his moment. It was his moment. Like, yeah. You, you, like, sometimes so Dave Chappelle said something in his Dreamer special. He said, Oh, how did he put it? Hold up. I got. I have it saved here. I'm not I have able it. to find it. No, no, I have it saved here. Give me two seconds. I'll, I'll, I'll play it right now in five, four, three, two, one. And that's the trick to life. You have to be wise enough to know when you are living in your dream 
And you have to be humble enough to accept when you're in someone else's. They said that in the his new special, um, I think, Dreamer. And I felt that. And I was like, yeah, because look, life is a game. I would use this moniker of player one. And even people sometimes think, oh, he's so narcissistic. He thinks he's player one. I'm like, don't you? Are you a bot? Like, everyone can grab the controller and play the fucking game. But most people don't. Most people, I'm sure you see it. Most people just go through life just on the programming. They just go with the flow, whatever. And it's good to go with the flow, but whose flow are you going with? Oh, yeah. So for me, I had to, like, pause and question everything. And I realized that was his night. That was his night. He was just, he just fought the perfect fight. No matter what, I made no excuses. And I gave it to him. But again, like I say, I'm a patient motherfucker. I take my time. I reassess. And yeah, I go for what, what I want, you know? Yeah. But you still feel a real fire for it. Oh yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. I mean, even the way, look, I had bars ready, but I just... The way he reacted when DDP mentioned some of his stuff, his trauma, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, that let me that let me know something. Again, even look, that moment you guys had was beautiful. I'll say that that was beautiful because I never seen him like that. Like I, after the fight, he's crying because he's so in, like, what the fuck? I just be I I I clocked it, and I was like, as a joke, I was like, hey, you're crying like a bitch. And he kind of laughed, and I was like, come here, and whatever. But then. When he was talking with you, and then you guys kind of got really vulnerable. I was like, man, no kid you have to, you know, go through that. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it was heartbreaking to even see that. But again, look, I'm a human being, and I can connect with people on a human level. But right. it doesn't mean I'm not gonna get you. Yeah. I'm not gonna <laughs> look. I even said this about Silver. Look, just because I'm a fan doesn't mean you can't catch these hands. Right. <laughs> you know, Silver was my Michael Jordan wow. of this fucking game, and I was just like, I was never. I thought I would never fight him. And then the opportunity present, presented itself, and I was just, I had this trip planned for Amsterdam, France, all this kind of stuff, and then the opportunity came, and I was just thinking, like, I got to do it. I have to do it. Wow. And I did it, and it was a beautiful fight, beautiful way to, like, I, I wish he stopped after that. I wish maybe he moved to boxing after that, because he, even he said to me in the case, like, I passed the baton to you. And then and I just kind of like bless me with all these words, and I'm there like, <laughs> like just so cry, you know, for me because that was never meant to happen. Oh, fuck, it was never meant to happen, but it happened. And I even have it framed in my house with fighting on this chess piece, like a chessboard, because that's what the fight was. And I hit him with that Rock Lee stance from Naruto, and he's standing there like Gara. It just looks so cool. Like that fight was electric. It was beautiful. Just a master, just a masterful way to play the game from two sh Taijutsu masters, if you will. Yeah, there's a composer element to you that I think is really interesting because it's like, and that's why I wonder about like, yeah, does he still love, like what does he want to do with fighting? Just because mm -hmm. there's just a lot of options in life. Yeah. And sometimes creativity can, you know, flow and just, you know, you can decide like, yeah. I've, you know, what else do I want to fucking, you know, be uh, an actor? Do I want to, you know? I'll act. I've already like turned down a few roles, a few high profile roles because I wanted to make sure I focus on fighting. That's the one thing I wanted to focus on was fighting. I don't ever want to get sidetracked and look yeah, at that's too much. Else. Yeah, because I, I know what I can focus on, and then if I do, then things can get squirrely. So I'd rather not. But um, yeah, dude, if you were like a fighter pilot or something, yeah. that'd be so <laughs> sick. Or if you were bitches. like in a war, like in a war movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I wouldn't say it. No, I wouldn't say. It. I'll say it off. I'll say it after this. Okay. But like, but yeah, um, I'm definitely gonna have. You know, I already got ties in Hollywood. Like, people want to work with me, which is cool. And I do my own stunts. I mean, save, save money. money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> See, I like what you're thinking. Yeah, save money. I do my own stunts. That's you don't have to fire. get a stunt double. Um, but also, I'll have my own production company. And I will, like, maybe make some some characters, like some anime. Or just oh, have yeah. weird ideas, bro. <laughs> like, sometimes... I'm, I, I don't know how to write a screenplay, mm -hmm. but I'll get someone who can. I can just vomit words at them, and they can just put it in a way that's digestible for TV or Netflix or, you know, a crunchy roll or whatever. Yeah, um, Stylebender Studios. I mean, Stylebender is such a great, it's like the greatest moniker, honestly, in a mm -hmm. lot of ways, because there's just so many 
you don't even know what it is, yeah. but you know what it is. Yeah, you I know? got it from even they just dropped the live action, uh, the Avatar series, the Last Airbender just dropped yesterday. Oh yeah, so in New Zealand, I've, I'm gonna watch it tonight. But um, for me, I, I when I was watching that, I, I I love that show. I grew up on that show. So for me, I got the name because I felt in this realm. I want to master all the elements of martial arts and realize my destiny as the avatar. And I felt like I was the one. So I have, and I'm still doing it. And now, you know, the middleweight division needs me again. So I, there's this, I'm, it's all about the story you're telling the yourself. Bad signal. Yeah, exactly. Like what story are you telling yourself? This is the life we live. And most people don't, they just kind of, <laughs> go with the flow whatever you're so but, true and because that yeah. shapes your perspective and then your pers that's the huge ingredient that i think so many people that um have that i didn't realize for years yeah is that perspective because mm. i can walk i can walk into the airport and be like i'm gonna be bummed i'm gonna be uh, perturbed if people say come and want to take a picture of people yeah. and i know it's a crazy attitude or you i can walk bombed, in I was like airport bond dope oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was like wait where's he going with this okay i'm gonna, gonna be, be bombed, bombed by people yeah. yeah but or i can walk in and be like hey man you're gonna get to meet some people today you care about people you love people embrace this embrace yeah. this opportunity and moment yeah. to be uh to have a nice moment with someone else and yeah. it's all that that's it's all, all it is even me now six months without driving i'm like oh well i'm saving gas for six months and then while i'm not driving i'm busy <laughs> doing other shit, making shit happen so i just flip it around in my head so that way it's more tolerable was it um when you got when you got to walk out with like fury what was that fight you guys walked oh, out in ganu yeah oh bro what was that like bro it was like three kings back bro, together kinda. oh that was beautiful that was a moment I'll tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. I'm very laid back, com like contrary to popular belief. I'm very laid back. But for me, I wish I, I dressed a little nicer for that walkout. It still looked good. We still we still had our moment. But like I kind of wore, I, it's, it's chic, like low key, like just it was too low key for the moment. The look. I, I there's, there's other outfits I've worn that I'm like, I could have still worn my slides. Mm hmm and like have that moment like it was beautiful like you know three kings but regardless we just looked epic walking together and francis just the the adonis that he is just his story itself is is bananas like if you know his history you've listened to it on jre and whatnot mm -hmm. the way he's come up now and now he's doing this when people said he wouldn't do this yeah making crazy money crazy money so I'm happy for him. Even Mike Tyson right there. It was a moment, bro. It was a moment for just for history. I love that. These are moments for life. I would never forget these moments, man. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it just, it's almost like you could never even understand what's going on, you know? Yeah, yeah that's so cool, Yeah, man. see, Kamaru was dressed with that. I kind of had a similar outfit that I was in mind, mm -hmm. but then I was like, nah, it's his moment, Francis. So I kind of I think that was chill. fair. You pay yeah. homage to him. You're like, I'm gonna dress yeah. down. This is about looking yeah. at him. Yeah, but then I still think like <laughs> for moments like that, next time, Israel, don't be so. Again, another moment where I was like, I shied away from shining. But again, regardless if I was dressed with a fucking headdress or whatever, he would have shined in that moment because it's his uh, moment. So I just wanted to make it about him. That's why. Yeah. When when you see stuff like this, like fights like this, do you get tempted when you see these guys fighting like Boxing. Jake Paul's mom and stuff like that, yeah. like fighting like um, Kid Leroy or whatever? Like, there's always this shit Kid online. Leroy, nah. Or oh, like, you mean you like know, the, the the boxers that everyone wants to box now? Yeah, there's always like a Care Bear fighting like <laughs> like Sneeko or something. Yeah. You know, like every week there's somebody's like fighting nah, um, a I'm drawing sure. of somebody's grandparents. It's or good something. for the sport. I think it's good for boxing because look look what it's done for. But also. Shout out to His Excellency Turkey, the guy that organized all this. Mm -hmm. He has lit a fire in the combat sports world in a sense. Step that, it up. Bro, they, they've been sitting on how much money of oil money, like just crazy amounts. They're just disposable income, like constant. And even the ad, there was an ad for um, in, uh, in, uh, in Ghana, um, Fury and Yusik, and they had all these mainstream Hollywood actors and actresses in it. And in I'm it. like. Because they just have the money, huh? just here but they've that's good for the game because now they've forced vegas you know everywhere else to like raise the up. bar so it's good competition is good yeah this ad insane look at the production and this is an ad for a, a, a boxing fight wow yeah and the, they pulled out but you know the fight will still happen later in the year i think they've rescheduled but 
Yeah, like this is... Is that Clint Eastwood? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Jesus. For an advert. And he's not cheap. No. Not for that. Not for acting, but... um. Oh yeah. wow! So you're saying that they have all this money, like at na- like it's just like they're doing with Live Golf, where they're like, yeah. So that they bought that as well. So for me, I've been invited now three times to Saudi Arabia, and each time I went back, it just felt like it was more. They were doing more with the next with the next seven years, eight years. It's gonna be bigger than Dubai, I think, or like the UAE, or match them for like tourism because now they just even lifted um the alcohol ban. They had, a, yeah, they had, they, I think it was end of this, in the last year or this year, they lifted the alcohol. You can man. drink there now. Now, I haven't been back since you can, but apparently you can. That's going to yeah. change everything. It will. It will invite more people through, and then there's more buildings going up every time I go over there. So, yeah. It's, Are you impressed by it over there? Then it sounds yeah, like. I am very impressed. Also, one thing, I'm the culture. I like the culture over there. They, they've preserved their culture still, even as the the landscape moves into the 21st century a little bit more and vice the world into the even in, in Dubai and, and, and Abu Dhabi they still you see the culture is heavily present there and I respect that I, I love seeing that when you go to a place so it's not too I guess uh, westernized you know like you I have agree Mc, McDonald's or whatever all that kind of stuff you still see essences of their culture everywhere which is good and I feel like over there they've they've done that heavily in wow. 70, first, Saudi Arabia wow. allowed first alcohol sales in 70 years. Dividing opinion. Yeah. Can you zoom in on it a little bit? The news that Saudi Arabia will allow... Go down a little. The news that Saudi Arabia will allow its first alcohol shop has citizens and foreigners alike mulling one question. Is this a minor policy tweak or a major upheaval? Sources mm. familiar with the preparations for the store disclosed details of the plan on Wednesday. Located in the capital's diplomatic quarter... The store, it looks like one store will be accessible only to non-Muslim diplomats. Yeah. What's a diplomat? That's, that's that's I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really political enough to know what that is. But um, all it takes is one. That's a Trojan horse. I mean, kind of like yeah. um, medical marijuana. That was the gateway. Now, now it's going to be a bunch of people everywhere. just doing fireball <laughs> on camels. I love fireballs. A bunch of people on camels <laughs> doing fireball? Yeah. What? Um. What's your drink of choice when you drink? When I drank, I liked beer, I think. Oh, and so. I like sometimes like a dang, like a pina colada or ah. sometimes like a Captain Morgan and Coke. Yeah. Like some. I'm, I'm a sweet tooth guy, but my standard is bourbon and Coke. But I like a sweet cocktail. I love a sweet yeah. cocktail. It's just, I, look, beer, my dad used to distribute Guinness all over West Africa when I was a kid. What do you mean he would distribute? Like he was part of a group that would, so he helped. Trucks, trucks all over West Africa. Wow. Yeah, cargoes. And we had so much in the house. And one time I was like, maybe six or seven. I was like, can I taste that? He's like, yeah, sure. I had a taste. And I, like, and I did not touch alcohol from that point till one time. I think I was 18, maybe a little bit heartbroken. And then hanging out with my oh, boys. Yeah. And, you know, oh, I just have it. And I have, I found Woodstock bourbon and Coke. And then when I first got drunk, it was at this park with my boys. I realized <laughs> why, like, this is why that girl outside the party's crying. This is why that guy wants to fight everyone. This is why that guy wants to, because it opened my eyes to understand what being drunk was like. But, um, yeah. It, it's so interesting, man, because one thing that's interesting, I think about you, man, and this is a judgment, but yeah. you are you are yourself, but you also are able to watch yourself be yourself. And some people... It's a. It's something that we all need more of. Self awareness. It's. We have to find ways to get it because I think it used to be the crux of a human being. Like you had a relationship with yourself that was evolving constantly. Like, yeah. um, you know, a lot of the greats, like uh, Marcus Aurelius and stuff. Not only would uh, they learn something, but then they would sit there with what they learned and develop longer. a relationship with it. Yeah. You know, like, what have I learned here? What does this mean to me? What like, am I getting from this? What is this serving me? Do I need to let go of this? Right. I'm constantly questioning even things it, that I've that been told. Uh, that's think, interesting, bro. Nah, not, not, I think just living life and, okay, example, when I was young, Sunday school, I remember, you know, you learn about God made the world in seven days and this and that, right around yeah, Adam Paul. and Eve. Yeah, and then, for me, I remember asking the question to my Sunday school teacher. Well, was like, well, if God made the world, who made God? And then no answer. Just kind of like, what? And then I asked my parents, asked the housemaids, my aunties. And then eventually one of my aunties was like, if you keep asking that question, you'll go mad. 
And then I kind of thought, like, these people, I don't think they understand. <laughs> I don't think these motherfuckers understand what's really going on. So it made me question, you know, what they tell me. And over time through life, I've had moments when I've done stuff and I'm just like, why did I do that? Why did I feel that way? And then, again, I call it like you identify the monster that you can kill it. So once I identify the feeling of, you know, maybe envy or anger or sadness, I'm like, why am I feeling this way? And I can backwards engineer it or something. So go go into that a little bit because I think that's yeah. important, man, because I think a lot of people deal with that. Mm. So say if somebody's kind of going through that, like what like what kind of process are you kind of talking about? Okay, so if you example, can explain it. if, um, say, okay, it's a, it takes a skill to be happy for someone. And I've noticed this because when I was younger and growing up in NZ, the culture kind of caught me a little bit where if someone's doing well, you know, it might, it might look like, ah, uh, because I noticed myself, one of my friends, old friend, I noticed myself like distancing myself away from him because he was doing so well. Yeah. And then I realized, I was like, wait, hang on. So I had to kind of, because I was like, this is my boy. I was like, why am I, why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling like I'm jealous of him when he's not doing anything to me? And I've seen people do it to me as well. The bigger I got, it kept on getting, people would start, oh, it must be nice type type shit you know yeah like oh and then you see them start to treat me differently so for me i start i noticed myself starting to treat him differently and distance myself from him so i pulled the brakes sat with it for a few weeks probably and just kind of identify like why i should be happy for him and it takes a skill to learn that and then it becomes your second nature over time once you become yeah. like reps 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 because to learn to be a hater was just natural in the environment i was in so I had to learn, nah, that's not the way I want to be. So you can unlearn behaviors as well. Even as I get older, things, <laughs> things, even women, I have to unlearn certain behaviors and be like, okay, oh, yeah, yeah, you have to know, like, this is maybe approaching this, being more honest or being more communicative and all that kind of stuff. You have to unlearn, unlearn and constantly learn new ways of being. Yeah. Um, when you, uh, when you look at the UFC today, like who mm. really kind of, um, excite you like other guys you're like oh this is fun i like this storyline like um are you able to get a different look at it being away from it a little bit like do you have yeah thing is before the ufc i watched everything i would watch all the embedded's all the countdowns all the shows they have on the ufc websites i would watch everything but then even when i was in it i was watching everything but then over time i'm starting to understand sometimes the way Maybe Nate and Nick Diaz feel because you've 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 done so much for this game, you've put so much in this game, and then you still feel sometimes disrespected, and then you're just like, man, fuck this shit, like fuck this game. But I've because I don't remember the last time I watched the countdown. I don't remember the last time I watched. I don't even watch the embedded anymore. I've kind of like it's played out to me in a way. But I was watching it when I was coming up, and that that helped me a lot because when I got to the UFC, it was uh, I just knew what to expect. I was like, oh yeah, I've I've seen this before. Oh, but, I see. Yeah, yeah. Well, because at that point, you're also surveying the like the stage, so you know, like I know yeah. where the camera's here. Yeah. I know where to look up right there. This you is why I have it. these moments, man. These people think it's all it's all like not a chance. Nah, I have these moments because again, the shower. I operate there, and I just know. Like example, the speech I gave after I knocked out Alex. I remember being in the shower, visualizing winning in Miami, and just like. Because I, I put myself, I immersed myself because of my imagination in that moment. And I remember feeling so happy. And in that moment, I was just like, I just, fuck, I just want everyone to feel how happy I am. And that's all I wanted to say. Yeah. And then the rest came vessel. I was just like, blah, 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 blah. And I just said what I said. And people fuck with it. And it became this moment. And I'm, gl I'm glad like, it became that moment because people still this, to this day, they're like, man, you made me feel so happy. I remember that speech and this and that. And when I speak from the heart, I feel it hits people because I'm trying to I'm trying to connect. We're all human beings, no matter what I race, know. color. Like you just when you speak from the heart, I can touch people, man. I don't know if it's my mom says it's a gift, but my mom's supposed to say that. But I, I, <laughs> so she's, funny. yeah, no, she's supposed to say that. But no, like, you're right. It's tough to even trust our own mom. Yeah, sometimes. but but like I I think from doing it. Over time now with reps, even when my my boys is uh I was one I was a groomsman at this wedding, I didn't write shit for the speech. I just spoke from the heart and I was like, man, I killed that shit. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's 
you know, it's a skill in a way, but at the same time, it might be a gift. But who knows? We're all gifted. We just have yeah, to. Tap and you into get more it. practice with it. You've gotten yeah. practice over reps, the years reps. after fights, after chi- fights in China. Yeah. People speak English. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> I just said whatever I wanted. <laughs> yeah, you got forty reps over there. Yeah. Nobody even watched. I'm gonna go here, back, man. man. That's the thing, because people actually they like they make a joke of it. Not my time in China, but I'm grateful for those times, man. Like China, man, adventures. Ooh. Really. Like unicycles Ooh. and stuff? Or like nah, what are you talking about? Talking like adventures. Fuck, I don't... This is a worldwide internet thing. But uh, adventures, like say, just after fight... Okay, so me and me and my, my one of my teammates, Blood Diamond, we kind of had each other's back in China. He's a Zimbabwean guy. Mm-hmm. And so we'd be living... We, uh, at one point, we were in Henan province, Zhengzhou, and we were just outside the city at this camp. That was our base. After a fight, we'll come back to the camp, you know, wherever we are. And I traveled so many places in China. Some places I can't even pronounce. Or I don't even know. Or I forgot. I'd go straight from the it's hotel, huge. fight, fight, hotel, airport. But then we'd go back to our base and then we'd take a weekend away just to go to the city, which is like 40, 30 minute drive. Boom. Get a hotel, go out there. And they they like foreigners in their clubs because it looks like the club is more popping. So we just get given free boost black label johnny walker you know sit down and have have a time oh yeah. some things i can never say on the camera but we had some <laughs> good fun in china oh wow. the hotels over there the 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 ooh, they, they the massages all that it was it was a good time but i oh yeah. again i i fought i was there for maybe 10 months i fought about 24 25 times one of those months i fought every weekend because I have four fights that month and I had two knockouts. But I was fighting constantly and it just elevated me because it's reps. I'm fighting. You know, I'm training with these guys and they spar hard over there. The Chinese, you ever really? watch ah, They spar hard and sometimes, well, back then they were still in the mindset like to train your chin, you have to, so it did stand in. Yeah. Which is not really the smartest. Well, the Russians do, <clears throat> what's that clip with, <clears throat> Do you have that clip with the Russian? Have you seen this kind of stuff? Yeah, the it's Russians. It's like... Uh, Sambo? Yeah, it's like instead of fiber, they use this thing, Oh, no, he's going to hurt himself? No. Oh, what the fuck? What in the Kama Sutra? Let's go. Let's <laughs> yeah, go. This <laughs> oh! What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Oh. Is that punishment? <laughs> That's got to be punishment. That's torture. Now, nah, this is training, bro. This is... For what? It makes him stronger. They're trying to separate the man from himself. <laughs> Jesus. It kind of looks fun. Bro, it but looks at the like same he doesn't time. have a shadow anymore. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going to rip his soul apart. Wait, what is that training for? I need to know. The Russian fitness training method, Pravilo, is still used in many boxing gyms today to increase strength and punching power. Can you wow. look it up too? I'm, okay, I'm trying to even see what the physics is. How would you... So, wham, do you have to restrain yourself? I don't understand. Well, I guess if you let yourself sag... If you have to pull on all the ropes and yeah. like hold your core, yeah, like Samson, just ah, maybe so that's you, something. Yeah, I have to ask my strength coach because even that's why I have someone who's smarter than me. I wouldn't ask anybody about that because yeah. I don't think I want <laughs> to. That looks see like it. some torture. He might be like, "That's a good idea. Let's let's add that to your regimen." I don't want to see uh, Gene setting that up for you. <laughs> Is that your coach, Gene? No, Eugene. Yeah, he's yeah. Uh, he's my and he my, goes by Eugene. Yeah, Eugene. Yeah. yeah, sorry. No, he's good. I just call him. Yeah, a lot of names. We call each other a lot of names. <laughs> yeah, <but. laughs> yeah. Well, you guys have had a long relationship. Yeah. Pravilo machine builds strength, mobility, the old-fashioned way, stretching out. Yeah, let me see a little bit more of that. I mean, that I'm thing. intrigued. I'm I'm straight. Because you could just tie, like, there's a torture method back in the medieval times where you can, like, tie a guy to this horse and his upper body to this horse. Mm-hmm. And then they just, like, hit the horse and then oh. they separate. So maybe that could be an old-school version. But that was a way to kill people, torture them. Yeah, it works to stretch and strengthen the internal framework of, of joints, tendons, and ligaments, as well as improve mental clarity and ability to work under stress. Okay, by stretching all the connective tissues and removing knots oh, like the and fascia. blockages. Okay, Pravilo practice increases blood flow to the entire body. I bet it's definitely. Yeah, I mean, if it's you know the Russians are pretty good at sport, um, so yeah. And I'll what be. do you do? It looks like your wife's mad at you. <laughs> I thought I was about to get ten lashes or something. <laughs> Next minute, whoosh, oh. damn, it kind of looks fun. A teddy. I'm crazy, so I like crazy shit. So Bro. while I wasn't fighting, I um, 
I took up other things like okay September. I feel like when you're not fighting, I feel like you're in Zelda Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I stuff. that's what it's like. I think from honestly, like, a like perspective. man, like, yo, not playing the game literally. Yeah, I know. But you're in the in the like I can do yes. anything. Like I'm, I've got money. I've got a passport. Fucking go anywhere. But um, for me, I took up things like golf. Golf's my new favorite pastime in a way because I like it because it's it's soft. It's it's a bit more um, slow paced. People say, oh, what about tennis or something? I'm like, mm -mm. something soft, something that's chill because my life is chaos when I'm in the gym. Murderers trying to kill me all the time, working out cardio, strength. So then when I'm on the golf course, I mean, I'm not trying to even flex, but I got pretty good. No, I want to see like it. A, I can't believe it. I got, I got pretty good in about how many months? Let me say I got pretty good. I'll send you guys this clip as well. I got pretty good in about five months. So this is me now. Ooh, my. It's not bad. Look at the hips on them. It's clean, bro. Yeah. Wow. Well, even like the last one, this is my I was my final one. I was like, you know what? There's a lot of great golfers from your country. Yeah, from Nigeria. Oh, no, oh, from New, uh, Zealand. New Zealand. Oh, yeah. Sorry. See, I sent that shit to the moon. I sent that shit to the moon. I was like, ah. And look, again, emotes. This is how I live my life. <laughs> oh, I sent it. Mom, yeah. <laughs> Cause when you're a kid, you be doing shit like this, and then yeah, when you get you to do, being a, huh? bro, I be I'm a Power Ranger when I was a kid. I was a Ninja Turtle, I was Action Man. Like you can be anyone you want. I was a bus boy for Halloween. I was like yeah. shit. I was what? like yeah, <laughs> a bus boy. I was like hopeful. Like, like yeah, <laughs> like we had a lot of like low <laughs> low hopes in yeah, our area. Well, I mean, know? I didn't really have the costume, but in my mind, I was I was legit a Power Ranger. I was always the oh, Black could, Ranger, could, either yeah. him or the Red Ranger. That's fair. But yeah, um, um, for, what was I saying before? Before I go on this tangent of golf, yeah. So I like golf just because it's something different. And who do you play with? Golf? Yeah, you just go by yourself. Oh, my homies. Oh, go to the driving range. But like last time was a uh, Slava Joe Hopkins. And my boy Matt and this other guy Jackson, I believe. Yeah. Oh, some local guys. Yeah, my friends. Oh, nice. Uh, Slava and Joe are fighters as well. Um, Joe still fights. Slava is just a big time businessman now, but he just likes to, you know, hit the hit the the golf sticks once in a while. It's clubs. fun. Yeah, you golf? Oh uh, yeah, I like to golf. I'm not good at it, but I do like to do it. Yeah, I I would say I'm coachable. I'm very very coachable because I'm the guy I like the details. Because at first I used to do this. I was this guy. So I would like, yep, yeah. and then I'd strike it down. And then it wasn't until um, this this guy, what's his name, Daryl, I believe, out South Auckland at the airport. There's a golf, a driving range over there. He told me, like, I've watched your videos, mate. Um, see, the way you, when you set up your kicks, you know, da, 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 da. And he explained to me and showed me my hip feint and said, like, that's the way. And then from then, I got to this where it's like, oh, my bad. And from there, ah, uh, I can get that in there. So once he once he told me that, we can fix the frame. Sorry, once he told me that, then I was like, "Bing!" And that's that's the day I started sending, and I was like, "Ooh, I'm getting this shit now." But now it's about learning what face of the club I want to hit with, so I can determine which way the ball goes. If I wanted to go a bit to the right or to the left, because right now it goes to the right at least 60, 65 percent of the time. But oh yeah, that's what I'm doing. I can, yeah, I'm constantly, and I'm okay. Maybe change the club face. So the details of it intrigues me. And again, it's slow pace, and it just gets in my brain. So I, I sunk my teeth into that. Last year, I went skydiving. First time. Gonna, first time. Did it in uh, Abu Dhabi, and that was dope. It was fucking sick. No was way. Who'd like, you go with? Other fighters or no? Nah. Uh, Devin Haney was there actually. He did wow. it right after me. Yeah, the boxer. And then um. Yeah, uh, dude, the, that's crazy. It's fun. Like I can't believe you've never been. Nah, I wanted, and you only have to do it seven more times, and I can go by myself. So there's ah, a that place. Seems like a bad idea. No, no, I'm gonna do it. You are, <laughs> yeah. oh, bro. <laughs> so even okay, bro. This is me. Man. I'm already even. I've got a, a motorcycle riding lesson on Saturday because, and again, my mom's a nurse, so she's already told me nope, nope. Oh, because she's seen the worst. Oh, yeah, a lot of the worst. organ donors are come from motorcyclists. That's what I've heard. You could do pink slips with Strickland if you guys. Nah, I'm good. Oh, does he ride? Oh, he yeah, does ride yeah. motorcycles. Nah. That would be crazy. But you, somebody would get. I'd rather fight him. Yeah, I'd rather fight him. Yeah, do what we do. The man dance. I want to yeah. do a man dance. But um, yeah. So for me, skydiving, motorcycle riding, I might get into that unless I get talked out of it. But um, yeah, something that just gets me going. That's why for me, I know when I'm done with this game. 
at least every few months, I need to do something that will make me feel like I'm about to die. Like something scary, something that makes me go, fuck, like this is this is happening. This is legit. This is real shit. I could die in this. So Why is that so important, you think, to people? I think it's, for me, I'm an adrenaline junkie. Really? Yeah, I'm an adrenaline junkie. I, I've accepted that about myself. Um, and I think you just, I, 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 even Alex spoke about it after his Islam fight where he said like, you know, just sitting around like, you, you know, you need to do something. You need to do something. And I felt that. A lot of fighters felt that. So for me, that's why I say giving me free time with what I have now can be a bad idea. But I'm glad that I'm older now, a, little, a lot wiser, a lot wiser now. I'm surprised I don't have any babies out there. Well, did I know of? Amen. Maybe in China. But we'll Ooh. wait another. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. But like, no, I've just, I've lived a life. Theo, I've made some dumb yeah. decisions, you know. I've been places. I've been places. Some scary stories, some good times, and some bad ones. But no regrets because it all led me to these moments and the lessons I've learned from them, priceless. And stories. Um, I'm sure you got some stories as well. Oh, yeah. Some I got to <laughs> keep to myself. <laughs> Just want to say, for me, because I've never really expressed this. Maybe after I'm done fighting. I'll, I'll make like another doco or docu series, and then I'll go deeper because or a memoir even a book. Yeah, I mean, get someone to fucking write that, co-write that with me. Because even while I was in the UFC, man, fuck, I was just I went through my own ups and downs. But I'm glad they weren't caught by the media because then one thing is like sometimes if if someone goes through something. You want to go through it alone without the world watching you because there's already like a magnifying glass on your life. You know, everyone's watching you oh, and yeah. waiting for you to fail or something like that. So yeah, people take their own lives because they can't handle what the media does. And I've the media has this, no bro. accountability. The media I've, has bro, no. A lot of people living our lives, they would have definitely unalived themselves, unsubscribed from life because yeah. it's, it's a lot. And I've been there before where I'm just like, fuck this is too much and i just i find myself going in my shell i'll just become a crab and i just whoop, and then i just i wouldn't really want to you don't trust the world then i don't trust the world nah i feel like i gotta protect myself so i become a I turtle know. ninja turtle but then a little less ninja a little more turtle. yeah more turtle yeah, yeah. less ninja more turtle. inner ninja yeah oh bro man for me it's just about learning learning how to come out of that and that's where you've seen in the in the doco uh talking to janet Who's my? She doesn't like to call herself a therapist. She calls herself a possibility manager. Bro, she's impressive. I was actually yeah. gonna ask you for her information. Yeah. Which is crazy. She's here. She's. Uh, she might be. I think she might be. And she. She retired, and just travels the country now in a caravan, seeing her grandkids. Wow. That's her life. So she's already set herself up. She's left that life behind of the nine to five or whatnot. So she just lives she, a life. She like asks the best questions. It felt like. Yeah, that's what it is. People think therapy is this thing where. This motherfucker don't know shit about me, but they, they don't need to. That's why you talk. So, and it's like dating in a sense. You kind of got to try yeah. different people. A hundred percent. So many times fits. people go see the first therapist and they stay with them for years. It's like, are you changing? Are you evolving? It's nobody's fault if you're not, but you got to put yourself into like uh, some boiling water. Yeah. Because you want to see what the fuck flavors are in you, bro. You got to figure it out. And if you get the wrong person, they can see like a, a therapist can sit there and be like, oh, this chick with blue hair, cha-ching. And then just keep them for two years and just yeah. keep making money off them. A great therapist or, or not. Or keep someone asking who, you about Billie Eilish all yeah. the time and shit when you come in. <laughs> but like a, a great one is one that would, um kind of like a doctor. A doctor shouldn't keep you sick constantly. She's trying to help you. Like, okay, Jenna, last time I saw her would have been over a year now. I talked to her maybe about two months ago, briefly through text when things were getting rocky. But thing is, she's given me so many tools that I can use. That when things get a little, because I'm human and life be yeah, bro. life be lifing. So then I have the yeah. tools that I can use yeah, yeah. to help me. Yeah. But then someone who just kind of keeps you in that suffering phase and they can milk off you is not someone you want to be with. So shop around, find the right person that can kind of want the best for you. And then you see, am I getting something out of this? Once you're not getting anything out of it, pull back. I'm sure there's something that's going to happen. Life is always lifing. Something's going to happen that'll rock my world. And then boom. Janet, are you free? Can I talk to you? Boom. Yeah, and that's it. But yeah, at the moment, I haven't seen her because I've just been, I've been awesome. I've just been living my life and I've had my ups and downs. But again, she's given me the tools to use that could help me bring myself back to balance. And that's what you want. 
No, bro, I think it's just so important because you don't hear that part about therapy. You just hear like, mm. go see a therapist. People are like, this didn't work. I'm not doing it anymore. It's bullshit. And it's like, it's bullshit. there's no somebody, me. yeah, there's somebody that works. Mm -hmm. um, you talked in the documentary about, and we'll get out of here in a minute, man. Mm -hmm. You talked in the documentary about How doing- How long has it been? See, time been flies when you're having fun. Wait. What's that? Probably a couple hours, huh? Nearly two hours. Hour, hour, hour 50. No way. Fuck off. We barely even got, man, you wait till I retire. We'll do this again. We'll talk about some shit. <laughs> I know, cause I, one thing I like is your perspective on things. You just, oh, the clips fucking, there's I think even the Instagram page, Theo Vaughn Clips, that sent to our group chat a lot. And now I just crack up like, you just say the most out the gate shit. And I'm like, how did you even think of that? Yeah, I don't know. No, nah, it's you. It's your perspective. And that's the beautiful thing of it. You're able to, express it so people can follow the way your mind works you yeah know what i mean it's cool to see thanks man yeah i like to i don't know i was just always like i just wanted to find a way to be myself mm. whatever that even means it was just like man authentically I, be yourself yeah and what do you who even am i and i just had no idea i didn't know what i i built this kind of thing i didn't even know what i was doing for so long yeah. life's crazy bro it is especially the life we live yeah i'm grateful but it is crazy. All, all of it's fucking unbelievable that yeah. we're just, you know, loud animals. You know, yeah. like, what if you were in the woods and you saw a bear, like, on his computer or something? You'd be like, this bear is... Yogi? Yeah, you'd be like, this, <laughs> this bear is mentally unwell, yeah. you know? But it's like, um, it's just weird being in society. But um, what about ayahuasca? Did you ever try it? You talked about it. So that's on the list. It's definitely on the I like the segue. <laughs> it's like, whoops. Well, you got to uh, get it, man. Yeah. It's so fascinating. Have you been? Yeah. Damn. I did, just went a couple of do, weeks ago. Did you like? Uh, did you go to the the jungle, or you found a guy that can actually do it properly? Because for me, I've heard like because of the popularity now, there's a lot of shamans who aren't really shamans that they just oh come sit down in a circle with us, kumbaya, and then give you the drug and or the plant medicine, and then you know you don't really get the you might get the trip, but you don't really get the benefits from like the 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 shaman to guide you through that you know the purging and all that kind of stuff but um it's it's been on my list but the reason i haven't done it yet and i told even mike tyson this was because uh you probably haven't watched avatar but that's the best way i can explain i've it. seen it it's about the the air blues, blues or whatever blues yeah, yeah. <laughs> no no the no, wrong one no, no. avatar the 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 last airband of the series not the not like the, the tuskegee indians or whatever yeah. <laughs> something or like tuskegee that <laughs> <Airmen>. <laughs> no 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 that's you're talking you're thinking james cameron's avatar i'm thinking the the cartoon okay i gotta yeah, watch the cartoon this. yeah oh this. there we go so yeah You're this avatar like. yeah the show the uh, i am um, i'm a big fan that's my one of my favorite animes but um they get to a point where this guy doesn't know how to firebend anymore because he became friends with this little kid, Ang. So for me, I felt like if I go to the jungle and then I realize a lot of my shit. Oh, yeah. And I I actualize myself and I, I, I come out, of, you know, clear clarity. And I'm just like, will it affect my fighting? That's the thing. Because I fight. I mean, you've seen this in, in the doco. I got chips in the dip. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm very I'm very I have something to prove, you know. I gotta oh, prove yeah, something, bro. you know. So for me, it's not always to other people; it's to myself, to my younger self, because I used to get fucked with a lot. So I, it, was, it was a way to like let I became strong, so no one could fuck with me. So no one could, you know, I'm I'm fortified in myself, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. you can't fuck with me, and I can. And that's why I'm able to be vulnerable now about all this kind of stuff, because I'm like, you can't beat my ass. It's all good. Too. Right. I'm safe enough yeah. now. That's, yeah. You know what? That's interesting, man. I can relate to that. It was like, once I got like, I always just felt like people judged me so much because I was poor where I mm. lived, how I got to school, uh, what we drove, how we were, you know, and it just like, I was just like, I just want to, you, I want to be able to be in control and like, and that younger kid, like now, like that kid that was all bummed out, like now I can still notice when he's upset about something. It comes up. Right. But yeah. as an adult, I can be like, hey. Uh, it's, so, it's cool. Right. I got you. Right. Because if I sit here and cry, if I sit here and cry with him, yeah. then I'm making him suffer two times. Exactly. Oh, that's so good the way you put that. The kid inside. the Because sometimes someone will do something. <sighs> okay, I'll say this. I was in Switzerland, right? And then <clears throat> we're in this like thing um 
the setting, classroom setting. Mm -hmm. And I went to go get a coffee, came back, and this lady had moved my stuff. Where they put me in the front of the class, she moved my stuff, and I was like, "What are you?" He's like, "Oh, I just." She kind of like made an excuse, like I wanted some girl time with her, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool. I, I prefer the back of the class anyway." But then I sat there, and for the first fifteen, ten minutes of the lecture, I remember just feeling rage. I'm like, "Who the fuck's this bitch? If you want to sit with her, get her to move. Why well, you have to move my stuff?" And again, it's this older white lady. And then move my stuff. And it just felt like, it just took me back to that moment. Like, oh, just yeah. young Izzy. And I could feel myself boiling. So I had to kind of calm him down. Like, it's okay. It's all right. You're fine. You're safe. Yeah. And then focus on what I was doing. But then, that was just recent. That was like two weeks ago. And again, people can do something that triggers you. Triggered. And then. <laughs> but you got to notice yeah. where that trigger is. Because Boom. It's, it's not attached. I'll get so angry. And then afterwards, I'll be like, oh my, what was I so, that wasn't even. Whatever happened had nothing. It's old shit. I know. It's old shit that we've just. I got to talk get... to rip press to put down. Uh, and that's what in. ayahuasca. That shit turns that old shit into a <sighs> champagne, bro. Yeah, champagne. Just bubbling up. Yeah, bro. You're it like, comes. Damn, yeah, it is a party. I've been to some trips. Like example, uh, before the Miami Pereira fight, I was microdosing and I microdosed a little bit on psilocybin, and I went on some journeys within myself. And I just sit on my couch, watch the lights, and just listen to this kind of like lo-fi music and just question everything even deeper. Like, who am I? Why am I this? Why do I feel this way? And then speak to my younger self. But tapping into that is key because if you can make him feel safe, you're able to go through life easier because you'll be surprised how many moments that just it rears itself. Even like I said, my people pleasing thing. I, I know how to identify it when it comes up now, and I just did it. I did it straight away. Even me, like people, I told you, I don't live like the commoners anymore because I realize I've lived that life because when I'd be at a bar, I'm like, hey, can I get 30 fireballs, you know, shots? Why? And then people start to hang around me because they they know I'll be like shouting drinks and whatnot. And then I get to the point where I'm just like, the next day I wake up, I'm like, why did I ever let those guys around me? Oh, I didn't like those people. Da, 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 da. But then boundaries. When I'm drunk, I'm like a Labrador. I just think everyone's my friend. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the opposite of some people drink bourbon and they think like, oh, it's, they call it fighting beer. I'm like, hell no. That's the last thing I want to do. I want to hug people. I want to high five. I'm, yeah. I'm super nice, super flirty. Catch all a that. frisbee in your mouth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, it's like but a yeah. golden retriever. You turn into a I am. No, but I, I, you know, like a golden retriever is just friendly with everyone. So that's what I become when I'm, when I'm drunk. But yeah, for me, I just realized, you know what? Boundaries for me, boundaries. So that way I don't have to, I don't have to, I don't have to be liked. I don't need to prove mm. to you that I'm down, that I'm just, I'm just another dude. Cause sometimes I feel like I have to do that to people, but I'm like, if you can't handle who I am, fuck, bounce. I don't have to prove to you that oh, I'm, I'm cool. No, it's, you can, you, I can relate to you. It's like, nah, I've lived your life. You've never lived mine. Right, right. I don't have to constantly adjust. Reassure you, reassure every you. Yes. Yeah. I don't constantly have to constantly adjust every moment in my life to reassure every single person that I come in contact with that's what that, that I'm the same as is. them. Yeah, that's what that humble shit is when they talk about in New Zealand when it's like, oh, he's humble. It's like, oh, not. some people, I see them. I'm like, not that they're not humble. I just know that they're different off camera or they're different when other people are, are around. Yeah. But when they're in the public, they want to you know, be relatable. And that's cool, but I'm like, nah, bro, you're not, they already, they relate to you because of your story. Like, they relate to you because of what you've done in your field, you know, and they, they, they fuck with it on some level. So you don't have to constantly bring yourself down to their level. Just stay where you are and connect with them. Yeah. That's one thing I learned as well. I don't have to raise, because when people come yelling at me now, back in the day, I'd have to like, hey, what's up, man? Uh, even yeah. if I'm not feeling, I, What's, yeah. You know, I like get it, but now nah, I just Let's if, watch wrestling or whatever on my phone or something. Yeah, people just like, talk to my dead aunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> like for me, it's like nah. If if I'm at a three and you come at me at a seven or a ten, I'm gonna keep it a three. Yeah. Like, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Or even it's, oh my, I'm like chill, bro. What's yeah. up? How you doing, man? You good? And I can bring them back to my my level of chill. Like, oh my god, I'm such a big fan. I'm like, that's cool. Come here, give me a hug. Give me a hug. And I love those moments, man, when people are really genuine. Ah, oh, fills my heart. I know, huh? Because you want to be genuine too. Yeah. And so it's tough because people don't know where you're at sometimes mm. because it's been a unique experience. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think um, 
it's a it's a learning curve and it's a learning curve for both for mm. both people you know and yeah yeah life's such a learning curve man it it, and i'm glad it is because it would get fucking boring you know we keep learning no, um i'm still learning even even to this day like i said two weeks ago that happened in switzerland and i had to okay calm down young izzy calm down it's okay but then there's gonna be something else that comes through something else that comes through great shit good bad beautiful ugly smiles and frowns whatever it is i'm going through it all and right now i'm just taking my time that's all i can i'm taking my time with everything because if i i don't know if you feel this way sometimes if i if i try and think because you know you got too many things to deal with you know you like it can get overwhelming yeah so i'm like okay okay that's too much and i just have to like right let me think what can i handle i can handle this right now and just prioritize what i do yeah still learning though adulting yeah, it's interesting. Mm. I'm glad that God or the, the gods that are out there let us mm. adult, that they let us um, experience and evolve and learn. And this it's life. pretty masterful. What has been created out of life is mm. pretty. It's unbelievable. It's like a. It's, it's definitely. I look one of the best this. Zeldas probably. Yeah, I, yeah, Zeldas. I see. I've only played. One of it, I never clocked it, not even close, but like, I know Link, that's the main character, right? Yeah. Did you play it a lot when you were a kid? Yeah, I played it when I was a kid, and then yeah. Breath of the Wild came out, and I played that on, on Switch. On DS? Switch, yeah. yeah. So that's the one I have, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, it's um, good. And they just came out with a new one. Oh, yeah. And it's cool, too, but Breath of the Wild is still cool, so you could yeah. stick with that one, too. Yeah, no, I still got that one, but right now I just started playing um, Helldivers. It's a great game, Helldivers, holy shit. And what's shit. it like about... It's for like it's like whatever? it's like Halo, Hell Divers Two. It's like Halo, but and I never even played Halo. I played Call of Duty, but it's just so you you go liberate these planets or these worlds from these robots or these aliens. But it's just the way the gameplay, um, the, the the you play with your friends online. It's yeah, it's 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 keeping me out of trouble. Put it that way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's important, dude. Yeah. Knowing when to get in trouble and not. Yeah. I, I mean, I like a little bit of trouble once in a while, but at the same time. I'd rather not because it always finds me somehow. It's it's a challenge. It's a way that, like you say, God would just put this problem in front of you so that way, oh, this is what I have to learn from this situation. Learn this. If I don't learn it, guess what? It comes back again. It yeah. always does. It'll come back again. I'm like, fuck, I thought I learned last time. Years, a decade, you'll be Bro, doing the same thing. And Luke. trouble's always in a, it's always gift wrap too. Trouble is yeah. not like, <laughs> trouble's not like fucking, hey, I'm trouble. Trouble's like, looks cool. Sometimes trouble's got a nice ass. Yeah. <laughs> they got that rubber dump. You're like, yeah, oh, shit, what? here we go. Trouble got, the, but, yeah. Got the God. heavies. Yeah. But um, um, I've learned though. That's the thing. Even younger guys now, I try and teach them. Just don't think with your dick. Just. Yeah, you got it. You got to use this, and yeah, many, many, many mistakes have been made, but many great, great connections have been made as well. So yeah, yeah I thank God for it all. But I still try and th tell the young guys that watch me. I just teach them just don't do this. Yeah, because yeah. there is some like you're like fuck. I learned such the hard way. Like yeah. I have got to tell somebody. Oh yeah, some of it's not even like you're preaching to people. You're just like nah. for the love of God, don't do this. If yeah. I don't let somebody know, then that's not good. Even another one is like, cause I'm not married. Um, but I don't even know if I want to. I didn't really want to, but I don't know. It'll happen. Maybe. Yeah, one day you'll do it. Yeah, it'll be Are you the married? next adventure. Anything? I'm not married, but yeah. I would like to be married. Mm. But I have a tough time with doing commitment. Yeah. I'm I'm in my selfish era right now. I feel like this these next few years uh I'm definitely I'm definitely on the back end of my career. So and I said I was I was the most active champion, me and Volkanovsky, the most active champions. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, you know? Yeah. And bro, most people get the belt. Right now Drick has got the belt. He kinda wants to chill. They want to hold the belt for a little bit, you know, look yeah. look nice, you know what I'm saying? I was like, who am I fighting next? Cool. Put that guy on. Who am I fighting next? Because you risk it every fucking time. Every fucking time. That's how I have so many defenses. Cause I'd be like, who am I fighting next? Boom. Let's go. You know, but um <clears throat> for me, everything I have to do right now is going towards this. Bro, I only just started having breakfast. Oh, but context. I used to wake up and just go straight to the gym, work out like two workouts back to back, and then have breakfast around one. I'm 34 now. You know, almost 35. I know my body's different. I have to put the right fuels in my body. I was yeah. living off Uber Eats, bro. Like, just. Really? Yeah, man. I was. Training for fights off Uber Eats. Yeah. That was. Because of skills. I was so. Off a of damn taquito? Yeah. Thing? You know what I'm saying? Like, Ow. Carl's Jr., uh, Indian food, anything. Chinese. You were defeating other, other men on Carl. 
You yeah. like Carl's Jr.? Yeah, anything. Burger King. Like, oh my God. McDonald's only when I'm drunk. Because I didn't really like the quality. But, um. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. It's like paper. It's really. Yeah. Like, oh, man. I ate a Big Mac one time. that did not sit well with me. And I was like, yep. So only when I'm drunk, I'd have McDonald's. But yeah, if a brother can't have a burger in this, insane. What are we nah. even doing there? bro, I've had so many. I've had over a hundred fights, so I didn't really think like the way I ate would affect my skills. But again, it does at a certain point. Because when I was younger, bro, when I was 26, 25, I'd be out. <laughs> you know, I'd be getting home around say four. Trying to get some pussy. Yeah. And from there, you know, you sleep around 6, 6.30. Then you have to wake up at 10 to go oh. spar at 11. Get punched in the head, hung over. And I, it's like, I could do it and just kick ass. But then the older you get. You can't do it. Your body doesn't metabolize it's alcohol silly to the do same. It. Oh, it's that's what I'm saying. Right. Now I'm like, how did I do that? Yeah. How, that was fucking wild. <laughs> how did I do that? No. So then. Now it's about, like I say, putting the right fuel in my body. Like I said, I've got my boy, Matt, who cooks for me now. Every day is a fucking cuisine. Oh, yeah. You know, and I feel better as well. My body, I, I can feel my lamb skin. lamb, too. Y'all ever had that? Lamb. We've got lamb. We've got, we got more sheep than people in New Zealand. Really? Yeah, I oh, think. Beautiful. Five to one. And Well, a lot of the people are sheep, but. Yeah, there's know. some people are definitely. <laughs> sheep. Yeah. Seen some furry hind in, yeah. in the area. <laughs> hey, you can <laughs> see them. They got mullets in the back as well. <laughs> same, same. Um... If the world ends, what's your strategy? What's your plan? Well, right now I'm building. Um, also having a bunker in there. Allegedly, maybe. I shouldn't have said that. Fuck, it's all right. But um, yeah, I just feel... I mean, you saw that world, the, the movie, the Leave the World Behind? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's possible. Very possible. What if the internet shuts down? Who knows? Yeah, like, you wake up and the phone doesn't work. They've shut down all New Zealand's connection to the world. Or you have so two calls left. Over. What do you do and where do you go? Oh, I call my dad. First person, call my dad. And um, I'd probably go, yeah, drive down to Wanganui. But the thing is, it's funny enough, during lockdown, people were doing that when they, they, they made the call or like you get the alert, lockdown starts at midnight tonight, some fucking purge type shit. Yeah. People were getting out of Auckland. People were going down to their batches if they could. People were trying to see with their family. And some people, these guys got caught going to Hamilton, which is about 45 minutes away from Auckland. Um, or maybe an hour away. They went over through like some farm roads just to get KFC in Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> just to get KFC in Hamilton and bring it back. I think they were gang members as well. I swear to God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look Gangs this up. love that. Looking for KFC. They were looking for KFC during lockdown. Yeah, look up Kiwi, um, <laughs> MS-13. MS-13, yeah. I, don't, I can't remember which gangs it was, but nah, we don't have no Sorenos out here. Oh, really? Nah, nah, no Mexican gangs. But um, yeah, they, you know, they're, they're prevalent. KFC. Kiwi, Hamilton, KFC. Uh, lockdown. No, lockdown. I just want to see the start. Yeah, right there. Yeah, it'll be there. Man, Man caught. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Look at that. I love how the police confiscated it. Yeah, man, we got that. That's their <laughs> lunch right there for the next three days. It just at least there's no crime in this country. If, yeah. if this is a bad yeah, deal. Yeah. This is like, oh, we got you now. That's if a couple saying. wings and a breast. <laughs> New Zealand police have made a bizarre arrest after a pair of alleged gang associates yep. were caught trying to enter Auckland with a boot full of KFC chicken. Sell that shit on the low. And <laughs> 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 Why, are, are you not allowed to bring it in? No, nah, well, you couldn't leave the Auckland district. Oh. So they left to go get KFC and bring it back. Like a couple storm hunters, huh? Actual. So everything was shut down. The, the lockdown was bizarre, man. Did you guys, where, uh, where were you living? I moved the to Tennessee during the lockdown, and uh, it was wide man. open. It was, oh, see, you could dance. That's why everyone titty, moved to titty. Texas as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah Texas titty. changed everything. Yeah. That's why all the, com the com comedy scene moved over there once. Joe and the mothership and And the there's a good players. energy there now of, like, possibility and mm. new and, like, people are excited there, yeah. man. It's I love watching spot. Kill Tony because... Dude, it's so good. I used to watch it back in the day. I was just talking about Actually, I used, to, I, used to, I used to watch it. No, I used to listen to it at my old job. Used to listen to it and so roast good. battle, um, and then when I saw Tony in Texas one time, he's like, "Yeah, man, we've ba da 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 da." Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> super gay, no gay. Yeah, he's like, "Yeah, man, da 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 da," and he was telling me how it's gone up, and I was like, "I right, bet I'll have a look." So now I watched it on YouTube, and I got my flatmate hooked, and yeah. now we've just been watching it like so good. the whole Hans Kim Rick Diaz thing just took it to a new level. Rick Diaz has got some fucking cojones on it, man. 
out of nowhere, the guy just like, stop protecting him. Yeah. I want his spot. And I just, I saw it about two weeks ago where um, the, the light cut out and he came out and then was flipping him off. I've uh, seen that clip. Yeah. No, he just, he just, uh, Rick Diaz appeared after the New Year's show. He just, mm -hmm. the next week, the lights cut out and then came back on and then Hans Kim is doing a set on stage and then Rick Diaz is right there just flipping wow. him off. It was it's a, like a soap opera now. It is. Dude. Yeah, it's got storyline. It. Oh, it's got it's a storyline to it now. It's so amazing, bro, yeah. to go there and watch. I'm going to uh, go one day. Like, definitely. I know Sean O'Malley went in the heat of the New Year show, but then at some point I'll go to Austin, Texas and I'll go to Kill Tony. I just want to sit there. I don't even got to talk. I'll just sit there, answer questions and just watch the the chaos ensue just live in front it's of me. so crazy. And they got the blind guy that you're like, what yeah. Oh yeah, what's his name? And he's playing, uh, <laughs> is it Bones? No, I don't know. The blind guy that hates gays. Yeah. <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> oh, I can't remember his name now. Oh my God. Fuck, I know his name. It's going to come to me. I hate. They got Chris Rogers, the painter there, painting yeah. the whole time. They got, and the crazy part is you get one minute, which is impossible. It would almost be like, hey, be the best UFC fighter in one minute. You got to just throw in hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, but then yeah. they roast the guy oh, that's or the woman. If, if, if they suck and if they're obnoxious, then you can see Tony's like, oh, I got a good, I got a live one. <laughs> and he can just pop, 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 roast the motherfucker. They, dude, the other day, they, I was I tuned in mm. um, on YouTube. It was streaming live. Mm. They had 81,000 people watching. Damn, live. That's it's worldwide, bro. Unbelievable. Yeah. For I mean, the concept itself is wild, it's but so then now to do it in an arena, and then they've have these main characters now, like the regulars, like Hans Kim and uh, David Lucas. Yeah. And now, oh, Cam Newton. That oh, guy, Cam Patterson. Right, oh, Pat. Fuck. Yeah. Racist. <laughs> no, Cam Patterson. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. Even he's he's funny. hilarious, yeah. dude. I want to have him come on here sometime yeah. soon. Um, where, where are you based right now? I'm based in Tennessee and in Los Tennessee? Angeles. In LA? Yeah. I see. You go back. How often do you spend between both? Mm, I tour probably six months, and the rest I do like four months in Tennessee. Tour life, road dog. Two, yeah. two months in LA. So what? where's next after this? You're going to Australia, right? We're going to Australia. Yeah. And then we got like Atlanta, New Orleans. New Orleans. We're going to put a show up at Iowa sometime soon. Yeah. So a lot of great places still to go perform, mm. man. It's been awesome, man. The world's a big place, man. I mean. I know. We want to go to South Africa. We want to go perform there. Wait till the UFC goes there. Yeah. Yeah, wait. It's a good I'm idea. Sure. Yeah, like the UFC is definitely going to go there. And when it does, I'll be right there too. It's I think. Well, what you perform tonight? I think it'll be my first time seeing you live. Oh yeah, yeah. Dang. Well, we better go get ready too. Yeah, I've only seen you <laughs> on Netflix, but yeah, I can't wait. Oh, this will hopefully be better, I think. Or nah, David enjoyed. It. My brother enjoyed it last night. He, he did. Was, yeah, fuck yeah. That's fair. He said it was dope. Yeah, so I can't wait. That's I'll bring fair. some of the gang. Yeah, I'll let's get live. it, huh? Easy. Um, Izzy, thanks so much, man. I don't think there's anything uh, else to say right now. Nah, wait till I retire, then we will talk. All right, yeah, we, <laughs> we'll get deep. Deal, bro. Yeah, I appreciate easy. it, man. Nah, thank you so thank much you for, for your having time, me. man. And thanks thank for the documentary for being, too. Thanks for being vulnerable. I really respect that, especially when people in opposition don't have to fake the funk. You can just be honest about what's really going on. So I appreciate that, and that's good for everyone else to see. We're human. Yeah, we're trying our best to be. <laughs> trying, anyway. That's for adults. Sure, man. I'm adulting. I don't even know. How, sometimes I'm like, how did we get here? How do I? Like, I'm like, am I meant to? I have houses now. I know. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm doing all right. I know. But, yeah. Even Rogan told me one time, he's yeah. like, sometimes it's scary because I'll pull into my house and I'm <laughs> in the garage mm -hmm. and I'll feel like somebody's going to come in right after me and just take it all away. Damn. He said, sometimes that's I have that. That keeps you hungry, though. It's a thing that just happens to people. Yeah. And, um, but Israel, thank you so much. Thank you, Theo Vaughn. Yeah, Rat brother. Gang. gang, baby. We'll see, vibe, you in, uh, gang, gang. we'll see you in the style We'll see you in Africa, baby. Praise, baby. Throw it up. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm just floating on the breeze And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can